Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the MLG Major Championship! Five incredible days of Counter-Strike are behind us. There's been some intense action, and after it all has shaken out, only two teams are left standing. Welcome to Championship Sunday and the Grand Final! Our two teams are lined up and ready to do battle. The first team are a team playing in their very first major final. Looking to become the first ever South American champions. Let's hear it for Luminosity! And their opponents appearing in their second consecutive major final, but also looking for their first title. Let's hear it for Na'Vi! Just one battle lays ahead. No more time for mistakes, no more excuses. It's time to stand up and be counted. This is the grand final. All right, folks, it is time. Red Eye has hyped up the stadium and hopefully hyped you up at home. I am Sir Scoots. I am joined here on the analyst desk with Richard Lewis, our friend Fifi, and Duncan Thorin Shields. Gentlemen, gentlemen, how are you? Are you ready? Awesome. This is going to be an amazing final, and uh, it's got a great atmosphere for it as well. You can already feel it in the air. Lots of uh, Luminosity fans today, uh, and a, a pretty impressive contingent of Na'Vi fans as well. I think this is just going to be amazing, and two teams that always play each other close, which we're going to talk about in just a bit. So, I mean, the uh, second best team in the world. I would argue that Luminosity is probably hitting third right now. Mm -hmm. uh, if anything, fourth, team, uh, fourth best team in the world. Uh, Fnatic is obviously out. I think this is the best final we could have hoped for. Yep. Yeah, what's great is neither of these teams have a major, yet they're both absolutely some of the best teams we've got in the world. So we're going to have a new potential world champion type team. And no exaggeration, I'm not just saying this because it's the final. So far in 2016, these two teams have played the best series of anyone we've seen in Counter-Strike. So this is the best matchup. It's always close. They have shared maps and they, they have a real rivalry going there as well. Like Luminosity, they really want to beat Na'Vi. Yeah. Let's show you how the teams got here. We're going to bring you up the top eight bracket. And again, a, a little piece of trivia. Navi has not dropped a map all tournament long. They didn't drop any maps in group play. They came straight out 2-0. And as you can see how they did here in the arena, 2-0s. Luminosity, slightly different uh, run, but again, fairly solid in the MLG arena. They uh, also went undefeated. They've only really dropped one map, right? And then the craziness of last night, uh, Again, some turnarounds that, again, we, we, we talked about it last night. We certainly can talk about it again today. Uh, for, for about 15 rounds, that was uh, Liquid's game to, to win, and they just could not close it out. So, And I saw Fallen and his gang last night at dinner, and I, I, I literally had to just bow down to him. I'm like, not only, like, that is, that they, that's an exceptional in-game leader and kind of boss of a team that, regardless of who you're playing, when you get down that many rounds, to just pull yourself up by the bootstraps and, you know, did it twice, not just once, did it twice. Uh, and again, just uh, amazing stuff by that entire team. Nothing, nothing to take away from Liquid, but they just could not close out the deal last night. Yeah. Um, and that's so, what championships are all about, you know. The yeah. guy who prevails with the mental fortune, he's going to get the championship. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and let's, let's show you really what they're all playing for. Obviously, they're playing for the honor of being the next major championship. That holds a lot of weight. But again, there's also a big chunk of money on the line. This is the first major. Thank you, Valve, for raising it to $1 million overall prize purse. Love that. And that's a big jump. You have to keep in mind, the last seven majors have only been $250,000 total prize purse. So this is a huge jump. So you can see right there, first place taking home $500,000. Second place, $150,000. You can see how the top eight finished out below that. And then everybody else, the folks that didn't quite get in the stadium, still take home some money. They'll all take home $87.50. So again, everyone got paid. But again, big, big money, big trophy on the line. Big, big, big final for both these teams, like you said. Never been to the finals for Luminosity. Navi has been. They were there last, they time were there last the year. Oh, heartbreaking loss. Uh, again, some would say that 
they should have won that one. Let's talk about Navi, but before we talk about him, let's look at some stuff about Navi. Guardian is our superstar as a sniper. We all believe that he can beat anyone, anywhere, anytime. I am here with the best op on the planet, as a lot of people are saying around the venue today. If I would talk about the pressure I feel, it's not because of the titles, of being the best sniper or something, but because my team is relying on me a lot, and when I fail, it feels so bad. The thing that was holding Navi back was all the pressure was on Guardian's shoulders. He's one of the best players in the world, he's the best opera in the world, and who's gonna step up and who's gonna help him? One player playing amazingly won't beat the best teams in the world at the major. If you play the major final, you're probably playing another team that's like a top 10 team of all time. Inside, Tipex goes, he has to make the play, and Guardian just turns around. Guardian is a really good sniper. Probably he's the best in the world, but sometimes he's missing, it's a normal. It used to just be about, will Guardian get a pick? Can we find somebody out of position and then maybe exploit it? Now what they do is they just control the map. They take over a part of the map and they patiently wait. He's not just a one-man army now. Now he's not flaming, he's a rifler, so he's got two aspects. It's like a dual threat system there. All of the team right now are on point. Edward had an amazing performance against Astralis. So now the pressure's on to constantly innovate and evolve. Easy round there for Navi, not dropping a single frag. To be considered one of the best teams is pretty huge pressure for us, because we've never been that good like we are at the moment. They haven't quite ever lived up to their billing. They've come close. They were in the final of the last major and weren't able to close the deal. With Fnatic out of the picture, that's always kind of been their kryptonite. They've really got to step up and take this. It took a long time, a long road for us to get here. I think we are ready to crush every single team at this event. It's like they have piece by piece put together this crazy machine that, yeah, I'd say like they're the hardest team in the world to beat. We want to win it, but we want to win it as team and as champions. Now they are in the grand final, the second straight time. All right, Thorne, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have you walk us through their storied roster. You are the esports historian. They're going to bring up a nice video or uh, graphic of all the players uh, on their live cameras. And then when they do that, I want you to kind of, first off, tell me about generally your thoughts on this, this roster. And then when we see the players, give me that roster run. Sure. I mean, they've already, with what they've accomplished, because they picked up Flamey, I think it was around like April 2015. So they've had him almost a year now. They've already accomplished so much, making it to the final of the last major, winning so many small tournaments, so many top four, so many top eight finishes. This has been a very, very consistent team. Like they can be beaten in the past, by the best teams in the world. Sometimes they, they got that problem, but they're always consistent. So we start at the very left here. So the guy I was talking about in the video, it's not just about Guardian anymore. This guy in his own right is one of the best players in the world. And certainly you talk about rifle players, one of the most explosive, one of the most exciting rifle players in the whole world. He could be the MVP of this game today. Flamey on the left there, the new addition to this lineup. Then you move one in from the left, you've got Seized there. Considered a support player, but you know his skill set. He used to be a star type player, a carry type player. And we saw that earlier in the tournament. He had a game that he took over against Virtus Pro. He dropped a big 30 bomb on them, and that's one of the best teams in the world. So you move to the middle, it's the man everyone was talking about. It's no wonder a lot of the preview video was about this. It's about Guardian because he's the best opera in the world. I mean, with all the stories we hear about Olaf and the problems he's had here, probably the best player in the world. And I think that would be unreasonable to say he was there neck and neck already. Interestingly enough, had a bit of a down tournament, actually. He's got to the finals, team hasn't lost a map, but he's kind of just been chilling. But that just shows you the strength of Na'Vi now. They're not the Guardian-only show, and it's not Guardian or Bust. You moved here, his right, you got Zeus. Formerly the mastermind in-game leader, even for most of last year, he'd had that role within the team for about six years or so. He was the guy who, who designed the style. They still play that style, but now he's just a supportive player in the team. He just plays with his longtime teammates, and obviously Starix has now taken over that in-game leading role and coach. Then on the right there, we've got Edward. And the interesting thing about Edward is, he's for me always like floating around the middle of the team here. He's like a skilled player, but he kind of takes spots that he needs to take. He knows he's not supposed to be the star, but in this tournament, he's been the best player on Na'Vi. This guy's been unreal and you can talk all you want about Astralis choking. Yeah, they obviously choked in the second game of the, of the semi-final, but on the first game of the semi-final, Edward basically won that one map for Na'Vi single-handedly. He had something like 32 kills. He went absolutely crazy and actually statistically the best player in Na'Vi for this tournament. So 
You can look at it two ways. Either if you're Luminosity, you're kind of scared because maybe Guardian's going to show up here and go crazy. Or you look at the rest of the team, you go, they actually don't even need that to happen. They can carry from the fourth position in the team. So this is a crazy deep team. This is their time to win. It's one of the few times they've ever been favored to be the champion in a major type scenario. But will that pressure get to them? Fifth, your thoughts on the team? I mean, yeah, like Duncan was saying, it's a very solid team overall. You had the star player, which is Guardian. Uh, he actually had a very lackluster tournament overall. Yep. Didn't really have any, any big games so far. It, like Duncan was saying, it is actually Flamey and Edward most of the times has been stepping up. And Cease, I mean, when Cease brought into the roster, he was supposed to be that star player on the team. Uh, and then obviously, they were still slumping a little bit. They still had their games, and then they ended up bringing in Flamey, this, this uh, new star player, uh, so to speak, because they needed more firepower. And obviously, he took over the reins, and Cease just went on to be the, the very consistent player in, in Navi. And yeah, just improving every single tournament, and now they're here again uh, in another major final uh, versus obviously not a team like Fnatic or a team like Envy, uh, but versus <coughs> Luminosity, another very uh, strong powerhouse team. And Richard, the question I want to ask you, we talked yeah. quite a bit about Olaf Meister, and he's got an injury happening with his wrist, and obviously in this match, Guardian absolutely does have a wrist injury. Mm -hmm. He's wrapping his hand every night. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, your thoughts on, you know, we talked briefly about how as we get more and more like sports and these guys are training so long, like we have different set of possible injuries, but this is a, this is a major concern for, it could be, some of these injuries could be career ending, so to speak. I know, I, I think a lot of people don't actually take this as seriously as, as it should be. These people practice, uh, you know, professional players practice an, an immense amount of time. You using your, your hands, your wrists all the time. And uh, obviously these guys are uh, picking up injuries. I've seen it in StarCraft, for example, in, in my time in esports, where you know whole careers are, are kind of pre prefaced uh, by this whole, well, it could have could have been better, but he had to retire because of carpal tunnel or RSI or whatever. And um, you know they need to watch it, it's a big concern. Uh, and I'll, what I will say is, I think it's been amazing of Na'Vi and amazing of Guardian in particular, and not use that wrist injury as an excuse for his lackluster performance. Yep. And obviously went off big style in counter pit just before it sure. with the same injury. Uh, but um, yeah, he, he, he needs to show up. I, I think the good thing is, like, as Duncan rightly points out, that his players have been able to support him, but big players play well in finals. And even if Na'Vi win this series and, and, and win the final and they do it without Guardian being there, there's always going to be, well, Guardian didn't do it at the major again. So he's under a unique kind of pressure to all the players there. But um, yeah, hopefully his injury isn't too much of an impediment because I really want to see the real Guardian, which we haven't seen here in Columbus. Yeah, and on the other side of the table, obviously, is going to be Luminosity. Let's go ahead and take a look at them. Luminosity is a team that essentially is like the brainchild of one person. It's this guy Fallen. Fallen basically is the godfather of Brazilian CS. He's someone who used to be a star player. And then because he saw there's not a lot of talent around me, and you know, we don't have like a, a tactical aspect to the game, he actually dedicated himself to learning to be an in-game leader, which is a totally different role. He kind of actively scouted all of the players in the team. He built this band of brothers, and when it wasn't working, when Luminosity were kind of getting close to finals, but falling just short, he made a very difficult decision to bring in new players. Gonna hit the ground there, it's cold. Oh, oh what? It's jumping double from cold! What is there going on right now? How does he do this? Yeah, I think every single roster change we did had a reason. We have been amazing after tackling FNX or anything, and we had a very good performance, better performance after Code Zero joining us as well. Cold Zero, what a find. This is a player that had been sort of talked about a lot before he made the move to Luminosity, but I don't think anyone was particularly sold on just how good he was going to be. He brings us the most crazy firepower we have in the team. Like, Cold Zero is insane. He's like a soldier. You send him to the war and he comes back like a hero. And uh, FNX brings a lot of experience. He's a guy that takes a lot of initiative, so it's good to have someone who takes his own choice in game. To be good, takes dedication. What FNX has is extraordinary. I mean, Luminosity continues to lead the way in terms of strategy, so it's very unique because the best in-game leaders in the world in Counter-Strike have, throughout all of history, been from Europe. The idea that a South American guy could actually be the best tactician in the whole world is actually like revolutionary in itself. The fact that he is this kind of courageous and bold character when he's expressing his opinion, that passes over to his tactics. He watches demos all day, he breaks down all the teams, and then he says, you know what, why don't we not just anti stratton why don't we try and innovate, why don't we try and do something new? I want this team to be remembered as not only getting there, it's how we got there. Everyone said we couldn't do it, everyone said we didn't have the, the talent. 
And we did it way different than everyone else in the world. And that's how I want us to be remembered. Well, winning this major would be everything we have ever worked for. Uh, we have been working so hard to get there, and I think it, it's going to be worthwhile for us for everything we have done. It's going to be a dream coming through for us. There you have it, folks. And again, I don't think you can nod enough to Fallen. Not only what, oh. he, what he has done with this team, what he does with any of his players around him, and what he has done for the Brazilian scene. Them, I mean, you called him a godfather in yeah. the video. A and again, he's the godfather, he's the patron saint, he is the, the king, the president, whatever you want to call it, of Counter-Strike in that country. And he's just an amazing ambassador, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't even have allocates for the guy. So let's, uh, let's talk about him a little bit. Starting with you, give me, again, Luminosity Breakdown. Yeah, I mean, if you wanted to set the overall storyline, the overarching theme here, it should be, okay, Na'Vi, they've been there before, but they never made it, and they've gradually been working their way. Luminosity, no one even expected them to be here now. This, they're supposed to be on the slow trajectory, you know, you, you make the quarterfinals, or maybe this time we could make a semi-final, maybe one day we could get to a final. They've already, in, in the space of a few months, elevate themselves, they're already an elite team. They're making finals, they're coming close to winning, but the key thing is they've never won a big tournament before, yeah. and they've certainly never been this deep in a major before. So the obvious narrative is like, oh, is it their time yet? Like, you know, maybe they need to more expect maybe this is like the first time you get there and you realize how hard it is well the good thing about counter strike is the game doesn't care about storylines and what's a satisfying way if you're better than the, the opponent in the game you get to win the title so this team certainly has the tools to do so they have this incredibly smart style now that's what's also interesting about luminosity is can they actually if they win the major here it would be so satisfying in terms of the strength of that tactician that they're going against what many consider the other best tactical team in the world so you'll essentially have to beat not only the person that was playing you so close but someone else who's mastered your style and then it's a battle of the it's a chess match between the two brilliant tacticians you know that's the th the way i think of luminosity it all does come down from falling now yeah no, you might have a brilliant chess player, but you've got to have the pieces as well. You've got to have this piece that can do this special thing. FNX can win the clutches, all that experience. You've got to have Fur, who's got that history as the entry fragger. You've got to obviously have Fallen himself. He's now taken over the orping role, and he's very good at getting those quick picks in that scenario. And then how can you not mention Cold Zero? Not only was he sensational in the game yesterday, but this is a guy who's so consistent with his game. And he's got kind of an all-round game as well. And so you can see, he said in the video there, like every roster move they made, basically the success only increased afterwards. And that's the thing. The shrewd captain, it's like he didn't just recruit the best players. He recruited the best player for what position they wanted to play. We're going to come back to the rosters because those guys are obviously not at their seats. They're standing up getting their huddle. Richard, kind of walk us through what you noticed this weekend with these guys. Well, look, all uh, week, I should say. Luminosity have put on a bit of a masterclass in sort of how to, how to grind through tournaments here. It hasn't necessarily been the most polished Counter-Strike. What they've been doing is they've been playing within themselves. They've been making these interesting vetoes that we've talked about. And again, just in terms of what happened with the Team Liquid game you're seeing on your screen right now, it's one of the it's one of the all-time great comebacks. I mean, this literally could have been a 2-0 to Team Liquid. It was there. It was there for them. They threw away something like 14, 15 match points across the two maps. So for them to just be able to grind that out, that strength of character. And again, you're talking about Fallen, that strength of character, that courage, that courageousness, that all comes from him. He's actually, you're talking about how, uh, you know, if you want to play chess, you've got to have all the pieces. Well, he went out and got the pieces. I mean, he replaced two players that he had a great history with, a great rapport with. He wasn't afraid to make those hard decisions because he knew Luminosity were falling short, and now he's given them this extra ingredient. And this is why they're in a great position to make history by winning this major here. It's, it all stems from him. And Fifth, what, what has stood out for you this week with watching Luminosity? I mean, Luminosity is one of my favorite teams to watch right now. They're so exciting to watch. Uh, Fallen does a great job in general, just making sure that uh, all the players on his team uh, is making uh, good decisions. Uh, coming into, I mean, yesterday, people were complaining, oh, they didn't really look that good versus Liquid. Keep in mind, they had a very tough game versus VP the same day, only had a few hours of break, and then coming into Liquid game. That takes a lot of mental fortitude coming in, and especially being in, in, uh, in the deficit that they were versus Liquid on both of the maps, Who's coming back, and uh, I mean, I don't think we've ever seen that in a major before, uh, being able to come back from s such a deficit. So overall, I think they match very well with Navi in terms of play style. But I think, uh, obviously, Fallen put in a lot of work and a lot of effort in making sure that he is the one that, uh, that, that's on the, in the driver's seat. And again, uh, your thoughts, before I get you to do the roster stuff, just your thoughts on how they played this week. 
Yeah, this week, obviously, they had some struggles because the Virtus Pro series, you, you can, before you get to the Team Liquid one, let's be real, Virtus Pro could have won this series. Virtus Pro was playing very, very well. It was a great map pool for both teams. I think what you really got to see there was that was a slugfest. Like, Virtus Pro took them and said, you've got to play your best CS if you want to get to this semi. And you know what they did? And as a result, they moved on to the semi finals. All credit to Team Liquid. Obviously, they were two rounds from making the final. And what that really did to me was that, that test right there was like, okay, we have a, a, this young, front running team who've never been there before and they're right up here. So, the question for the Luminosity is, can you work your way back into the game? Now, if they'd, have, if they'd have tried and panicked and they'd tried to get it all back in one go, they'd have probably just blown it, lost the round, and, and it would have been Team Liquid in the final. But instead, they had that kind of like mentality that we have to grind our way back in the game, intelligently get back. And so, as much as you can say Team Liquid through it, you've also got to give credit to the Luminosity guys for taking it back from them. Now, in terms of the roster here, so on the left, we've got Fur. Before Cold Zero joined, he was the original star of the team. Amazing entry fragger, and he has been moving more back into that role. He's been having some issues at this tournament, but at Katowice, the a tournament couple of, a couple of tournaments ago, he's very, very good. So we still know he's got it in him. Next to him is FNX, really, really old school player. He actually won what was the equivalent of the World Championship for Counter-Strike 10 years ago, ESWC 2006, with a totally different lineup. So he's a veteran, but now he's not that explosive rifle. Now he's this clutch master. In the middle, there we go, the brain of the team, Fallen. He also, by the way, just to give credit, he works with Zeus as well, and they have kind of a, a great dynamic duo aspect going on in terms of analyzing the demos, giving advice to each other, thinking thoughts through. But in his own right, a very good opera as well. Now, he's not the Guardian style opera who holds one angle. Instead, he, he tried to create situations on the map. He tries to get information and maybe get a pick. So quite a unique opera, but certainly one of the best in the world. Very fast firing speed. To his right is, for me, the true star of the team. It's Cold Zero, one of the best players in the world. A guy who actually, interestingly, yeah, he's known as this really stable rifler who just grinds you down one by one by one. But on CT sides, you'll see him AWPing as well. You obviously saw him with the crazy no-scopes, but he's more of a standard style of AWPer who just chooses it so you can lock that one spot down. And then to his right is Taco, and he's the guy where when he came into this lineup, you bring him back FNX to pro-level play. Everyone knows that guy's a legend. Everyone knows he was a world champion. But Taco came in, and this is a guy where they were like, um, was that the right move? Should it have been one roster move instead? And he played quite poorly for his first few tournaments. Yeah. But then IEM Katowice, where actually Cold Zero, the star kind of didn't come up big for them. The reason they were in the final was partly due to Taco. He had games where he was getting 30 plus kills. In this tournament, his form's gone up as well. So overall, it seems like he's gotten over whatever those issues were, or they've integrated him better into the team. Maybe they had to put him in different spots or put him playing with a different player. And now he's playing the best counter strike he's played. So at the moment, the whole team's on, on quite a big high. I mean, essentially, aside from Guardian's wrist injuries, what I think is great about the two teams we've got in the final is they're both in incredible form. Neither's had a really big slump period or a dip or anything like that, whereas some of the other great teams obviously have been a bit up and down or they lost a key match here. So for me, it feels like both are at peak level almost. And now we're just going to see who actually gets to be the world champion. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Before we finish and get into the picks and the bands and all that good stuff for the match starts, let's check in with our casters and see what they think of the matchup. This time, bringing you the grand finals. Of course, you can see them now. Anders, Moses, and Semler. Gentlemen, what do you think? Wow. Well, Scott, I mean, this is going to be uh, one for the history books, I think. One of the closest matchups possible. And I think for the first time in a long time, I'm, I'm, I'm just a little bit nervous actually going into this game. Uh, I don't know what to expect, but you guys covered almost everything. I do have a plan in mind, something I've been thinking about for a long time, and I think this is the perfect place to do it. So if you guys in the crowd are ready and sort of want to follow up on this, you guys know when we're in a 1v2, 1v3, anything like that or, or above, we call that a clutch situation. I want you guys to chant with me. Just go clutch and clap your hands quick. And we can see if we can get that chant going when we're in a really tight situation. So please, come on, follow with me. Clutch, 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 clutch. Yeah, all right. Remember that. Remember that when we get into one of those tight situations. And we'll see if we can get that rolling. Semla, you have one point you wanted to finish off with. Well, no, it, at the end, at the end, Taco did get some attention on the desk, mm. and I felt like it was a little unjust that he wasn't getting as much attention as the rest of the team because his level across the board has definitely come up. You know, I heard a lot of talk about four of the players, but we have to make sure that, you know, Taco gets mentioned because he has definitely uh, come to be one of the key players for this team yeah. to really be able to hit this level. He's dropping 30 bombs all over the place. We saw it against Liquid. He had huge rounds last night to put them here into this finals. And so, you know, just wanted to make sure Taco, yeah, <laughs> get his love. Moses, any last thoughts on this matchup before we start? Just hyped up for this crowd. It's been fantastic all week and weekend. Expect much of the same here tonight. Well, there it is. And uh, we're going to throw it back to the analyst desk to get uh, the final wrap up before we head into this fantastic game. Thor, don't body me. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, <laughs> don't punch me. Thank you very much, gentlemen. <laughs> Anders, you are a brave man. I tried to talk to the crowd last night. It didn't work out so well for me, so I'm very glad that you tried it again. Huh? So, I was half expecting Moses to put Team Liquid was going to win or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know? well, we had to get a little banter in. All right, so our last talking point is a, a big one. Uh, and I'm, Richard, you're going to kind of steer us through this one. Yeah. These guys have met 11 times, 11 maps so far, um, and it's, it's, it, it couldn't be closer. Walk us through how tight these two teams play each other. This, this is why it's one of the great rivals. So stylistically, they're very similar. In that they have this um, slow, tactical, methodical approach, but they've got explosive players to augment that. But they've played 11 uh, maps. Navi have five. Luminosity have six. Now, the really interesting stat is that they've played 332 rounds in total, and they've got 166 each. So it's right down the middle. You know, you, you, you cannot separate these two teams. And of course, they played that amazing series in, in Katowice. That overpass game was ridiculous. It's one of the best that we, we, we've seen. And yeah, just this, that, that was an overtime victory on that map. So, I mean, these guys always, always, always play each other incredibly close. If it, your thoughts on the, the, this legendary matchup right now in the sense of, I mean, 166 rounds each. Yeah. Couldn't be even, and again, shout out to Lurpus. Big article, breaking this all down. I do have a challenge told me for you, can you tweet me CT and T sides on that breakdown? See how even that is. Fit. Yeah, I mean, both teams have solid vetoes as well. They always, uh, Navi always bans cash. Uh, Luminosity actually tried to play Navi on, on uh, Dust 2 once. They got completely pummeled, so that is off the equation. The other five maps are played very frequently. The only one that we haven't really seen that much is Overpass, I think, and that was the massive overtime one. Two overtimes, saw triple boost here and there. Luminosity still got away with it. I think overall, uh, that I think those stats just speak for itself. What kind of final we're into uh, that we're gonna have today? Yeah, and obviously Luminosity came out on top in that one. And what was interesting that was prefaced by Fall and having like a huge game. You know, not always uh, something that happens, but he was immense in that and was the best opera uh, on the server against Guardian. So I mean, crazy. It Gonna lean to you before we get yeah. into the vetoes. Uh, obviously, you've already said very, very close map pool. But what do you think it's gonna be? Yeah, well, the thing is, unless Luminosity wants to pull a kind of a fast one here, it's, it's going to be very standard vetoes, actually, because the key thing is Navi always bans cash. And if you look at the way Luminosity obviously had this epic game against Team Liquid on cash, it's not their best map, but they can certainly play it. So Navi literally does not play it ever. It's not that they just ban it against most people. They never play it. So it's almost certain to me Navi will continue that pattern. Now, here's where it gets interesting, because Luminosity should ban Dust 2. They barely ever play it. They're not very good on it. And... I mean, I, I was trying to trying to get my brain into a situation where I could say Astralis could win on Dust 2 against Na'Vi, because I was like, Na'Vi's amazing on it, but they don't play it very often. Yeah, that's because most people ban it against Na'Vi, and the reason why is because of what happened to Astralis yesterday. So, Luminosity, for me, unless they've got some crazy plan, it would be suicide for them to allow Dust 2 through. So it should be a Dust 2 ban from Luminosity, as we so often see from them. But then, you've obviously got five put maps left, and the key thing is, they can play all five. They can, and the key thing, when you look at the strengths, okay, so Luminosity's statistical two best maps, uh, Train and Overpass. Well, Navi loves both of these maps. Overpass, not so much as frequently now, but then again, not a lot of teams play Overpass, but Train particularly, Navi are unreal on that. So actually, as a result, Navi, if they want, they can pick Train, thinking it's phenomenal for us, but that's also kind of playing into Luminosity. So, like, like was mentioned here by Fifth Lauren, when they met at the IM in the semifinals, actually, Navi decided, let's go with Overpass then, because that's kind of played a little bit less on the side. It's supposedly a very, very good map for the Luminosity guys, but they had all these trick boosts up their sleeves, so that's part of why I think they were picking that. So I'm not so sure they'll actually go with Overpass now, and they did lose that game, famously, to Luminosity in overtime, so I think they'll maybe veer away from that. So I'm thinking from the guys from Navi, maybe a pick of something like Maybe not train because that's so strong. So I'm thinking the trick pick here is Cobblestone. Because I think, yes, okay, remember yesterday when Luminosity played Cobblestone against VP and we were saying, you know, this hasn't been like the best map for them. In fact, it's going to be difficult. Well, we were trying to theorize, maybe they have this new strategy, maybe they watch Navi play it and they took a lot from that. First of all, they watched Navi play it, so they know Navi's fantastic on it. That's a reason to stay away from it. Secondly, they didn't have a great T side on that. It's only the CT side that got them through, and then they actually struggled towards the end and VP was doing a comeback. So I think Cobblestone would be a very clever pick, a very shrewd pick from Navi. And I think not only historically has it been the right pick, but Luminosity's third really good map, Inferno. So you always, if you can, as long as... Um, Cash isn't there, which it never is against Navi, and so we've got a dust two ban. This is as we expect. So we're expecting the cash ban next for Navi. As long as cash isn't available, and it never will be when you play Navi, the next best map you can have a chance to beat them on is Inferno. Astralis almost beat Navi on Inferno yesterday. It yeah. took Edwards 30 plus kill game to get a 16 14 win, and Navi was 14 14 with a quasi buy on the T side and was looking to lose that game. So I think in the past it's been a good pick. I think it's an intelligent pick for them right now, and I think there we go, the cash ban as expected. So now, 
with the way it's going at the moment, presumably Luminosity picks first, so we're actually going to find out yeah, they go with Mirage. So that's interesting because you would think to yourself, Navi is one of the best teams of all time on Mirage. They are yeah. so fantastic. Now, Luminosity, this is what they made their name on. This is where they first got really good in Counter-Strike, was they were actually Mirage specialists. Now, admittedly, that was back when two of the same players played on the team. They've brought in different people since then, but they've never, they've never given up that Mirage. Now, the reason why I think it's bold, though, is because you have to remember, Mirage was the game they played against Team Liquid yesterday. Yep. So the demos that you're going to watch anyway if you're Navi, or maybe we're watching live in person, are going to be the games against Team Liquid. And so they played that one, and that was where they had struggles they were facing map point on that one and if it wasn't for some amazing ct plays they would have been out of out well they would have been onto a third map so actually navi goes with their own bold pick they say didn't work last time you know it's going to work this time we're going to go with overpass even though you beat us on it at am because i mean navi have always been good on this map ever since it was released they were one of the teams who hunkered down and got into it for me the dream map now for the third would be train because then you've got a map that both teams are really strong on both teams can certainly win and then if you got to that third map you don't want it to be like inferno comes out and navi historically has had failures on that and the luminosity is favored i like it to be where all three if maps it's, if it's inferno here navi are going to be they're going to tilt a little yeah, bit but, tilt a little but bit the good time. news is they can obviously still think we're good enough train to there we go train God it is damn. now it's no exaggeration to say that all three of these maps are good maps for both teams mm -hmm. in fact both teams are some of the best in the world on all three maps so as a result this could be 2-0, this could be 2-1, this could be 2-0 and 2-1 for any of these teams. So I think right now, when you get a map pool like that, you can't just go on the maps and go, historically, this happens. I think you really have to go on stuff like, how do you feel the form of players is coming in the tournament? Who's playing well right now? What players do you need to be on fire on a certain map to get a win? So you got, you, you got your work out for you here, boys. This is actually an insane best of three. Yeah. <laughs> just the Navi pick of overpass, I was also Ballsy, expecting right? double plays. <laughs> Very ballsy. And the Mirage pick as well is extremely ballsy. I think, like Duncan was saying, it could go either way here. It could be a 2-0 for either team or possibly even a 2-1 a, a to, to either team. It's like so close on the, all three maps here. And it, this is exciting. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm really excited to see Mirage in there because, you know, Na'Vi is so good on that map. But, of course, the catalyst to it being good on that map are two things. Obviously, Guardian in that mid with the AWP, but also seized on that uh, B-bomb site. You know, he put up ridiculous numbers last time they played it at uh, this tournament. And, of course, Luminosity picking it. Well, you struggled a little bit against Team Liquid, of all things. And, of course, they've got the benefit of hindsight, having watched that game, having a demo, so they've got stuff prepared for the final here. So, Ballsy doesn't do it justice. I just wonder if there's some sort of mad psychological meta game going on here with these, well, these picks in the final. Here's what I think's happened here, and this is what I love about this for a final, is if it's a normal tournament and you're just trying to, like, just beat that guy and you don't think about the, the, the stage and the circumstances you're playing in, you might do what I said. You might pick, like, Luminosity, pick Inferno. It's not our best yeah. map, but we know it's the weak map for Na'Vi. Oh, and then they go, oh, well, it's not our best map, but let's pick Cobblestone because we know it's not so great for them. So basically, you're just trying to pick your opponent's weakness, hope you do all right enough to win it. Instead, they basically said, I think we're better than you. These are our best maps. They're your best maps. Let's see who's the best on them. And ultimately, you want to see the best Counter-Strike to see who wins the World Championship. Yeah, it's just a hands-down brawl, isn't it? You know, that's what they're doing. Yeah, and, and, uh, you know, and Simple made a very valid point, and he wasn't insulting Fallen's team. He, in, in a way, he was actually insulting his own team. But if, if Luminosity gets down... See that. If, if Luminosity gets down... Uh, to, to Na'Vi like they did to Liquid, yep. that door will not stay open that long. Like, Certainly Na'Vi not. will not let that happen. No. So, um, no. the, both sides obviously have to, have to start out strong, but let's put you guys on the spot. Let's go with predictions, starting with you, Thorin. Sure. Well, I mean, after this map pool, we've got Mirage, we've got Overpass, we've got Train. In this one, just because they're so tight as maps, I think it's very difficult to say 2-0, because even if, say, the first map, say, say Luminosity's pick went shockingly to Na'Vi, they can certainly come back on the second map. It's going to be very hard to maintain the focus, so I won't do the 2-0 pick. I'm going to say 2-1 to Na'Vi. I hope it goes to Train. I think it should be fantastic. I think Na'Vi in this scenario is actually going to be the one who... I'm, I'm actually going to say they're going to reverse picks. I'm going to say Na'Vi wins Mirage. I'm going to say Luminosity gets overpass, and we go to Train, and Na'Vi takes Train, because they are the best Train T-side team I've ever seen on this version of the map, and that's exactly what you want going in a final, where you've got the standard CT side and you're monsters on train T. I think the Luminosity will win Mirage. Uh, I think somehow they, they, well, they have to because uh, I don't see them really winning train versus, versus Navi. Um, if they win Mirage, then I think Navi, the reason why the, the overpass uh, pick came into play here was that in that overtime, there was a lot of mistakes coming in from Navi's side. Mm -hmm. they, they tried their best. They tried the triple boost. Probably something they saved for the major, right? Still didn't happen. Coming in here, they're like, well, okay, we didn't really play to the best of our abilities on this map. Let's just straight up pick it here and let's win. I see Navi winning that one, and then I also see Navi uh, winning train. So I, I think it's going to be 2-1 to Navi.
and you, Richard. Yeah, it's it's really really tough. Uh, I'm writing these down. Yeah, this yeah, time yeah. You're, you're gonna you're gonna hold me up. I'm gonna keep, keep a record. I'm gonna keep a record. This now, time. So, so far, like I, I did call Navi to win the whole event, and I cannot deviate from that, having seen that uh, veto there. But what I think is interesting is this Mirage pick. I don't know. Luminosity haven't really sold me on it, despite it being the map that helped make their name, and despite them being so good with two iterations of the roster. I think Navi are phenomenal on Mirage. I think they're a really really good team. And like I say, if Seized and Guardian show up on it, I don't even think Luminosity can win that one. This could. I'm, I'll call it. I'm going to go 2-0 in RV. Sure? I'm going to say okay. it. I don't even think we get the C train. Right. You got some fans behind that uh, pick as well? It sounds like. <laughs> or maybe something else. Is that <laughs> Who knows, maybe. Yeah. Um, something's here. Something's happening. All right, so <laughs> final thoughts on the matchup, gentlemen, before we get it started. I think if you had to say before the tournament, how would you construct the closest possible final, assuming both teams play up to form? This would be the maps, and this would be the two teams. So even though we're, I think everyone here said Navi, right? You said Navi for Flint. Yeah. So we're all picking Navi. That doesn't mean it's like some obvious pick here. We're, we're doing that going off like gut feeling, analysis of the players, strength at the moment. Certainly Luminosity could win. As I said, Luminosity could win 2-0. They could take Mirage and pass. They're fantastic on those maps. So I just hope it's a brilliant Counter-Strike game. And I actually hope that we don't win in the scenario a bit like the semifinals, where it's like people are struggling, and people are getting let down on certain rounds and then someone wins around by something fluky. I just want to see both teams at the peak level go head to head and then the best team win, whoever that may be. Yeah, for me, I mean, I think just keep an eye out on the two uppers in, in the other team, Fallen and Guardian. I think that they're going to have massive games. Yep, stage is set for one of the great finals of uh, Counter-Strike tournaments. Uh, I, I can't wait. I hope it actually goes to third maps. I hope my prediction's wrong. All right, thank you, gentlemen. That's going to do it for our segment. When we come back here, we're going to start map one of our grand finals here at the MLG Major Championships. And again, Anders, Semler, and Moses are going to bring you all the action. Ladies and gentlemen, here it comes, Navi and Luminosity Gaming in a best of three grand finals for the MLG CSGO Major Championship. We have finally made it here and it's been a very long path to get us all the way here and you, you already get what this is all about. These two teams might be one of the best matchups we have in Counter-Strike right now. There was some, some, some doubt going on on the analyst desk. I, I want to hear you, your opinion on it here. Uh, Selma, you go first. Who's going to be who's going to be taking this? You can see it going back and forth quite a bit on that analyst desk, and that's yeah. because this is pretty much the best grand final we could have hoped for. Both of these teams are dead even nearly. I mean, I'm going to say that Na'Vi win, but it's going to be like, you know, 60, 40 percent. You know, like it's not it's not a clear cut victory here. And we, we don't even have any time for analysis on our side. We're getting right into the match. So let's go ahead and do our job, fellas. Yeah, this is a, a pretty quick start as well. They're just instantly taking up in B apartments, running a couple of people on the pass for some mid control here. Guardian looking for an opening, very aggressive here, trying to put Luminosity on the back foot already. Guardian trying to push up there, a bit of a dangerous fight. It's going to be seized to pick up the first kill there. Taking out Taco, so that leaves in a four on five. Oh, wow, they aren't even backing off, Navi. They're still willing to take the fight. Flash in, and it's a bit too late. Fallen decides to just go jumping in with the first block, and Guardian's going to be able to take him out. Seized, gets caught on the window, but he rotates off as well, and Edward's there to back him. Zeus, it's just the total fist fight that's happening up in the apartments right now. Navi, they refuse to give up this bomb site to Luminosity. And because of the aggression of where they've taken this fight, it's allowed so much rotation to come in. Luminosity can't regain this map control. They're now over here and they're just stuck in these halls. They know they're surrounded. There's not really too many options available to them at this point. No, this is going to have to come down to Navi making a big mistake, and that could be one of them there. Seized walking right into the Glock shot fur. Going to be able to pick up a second kill of the round for himself. FNX is the only, there's got to be the candidate here. He's also very good in the clutch, so we've got to see if he can actually make this work. He's Got the Glock, surely, but um, they really they only have one flashbang to set this up with. And first in the back line here, going to be popped on over, and it actually works quite well on Zeus, at least forces him back a bit. Now just 28 seconds left, and Edward looking for a bit of a click for picking up a third kill. This is somehow slipping out of Navi's hand, even though they were in a fantastic position. But there is still an HE grenade on Edward. It's going to go wider for He's still alive here. FNX doing more. Fur now landing a quad kill. He's finally going to be going down, and now FNX, he's got all the chance of the world here, trying to see if he can fight it or flame it coming through. Double kill for him, saves the round for Na'Vi. Such a sick play by Luminosity to even get into the bomb site. I mean, they, they do punish C's on that push, but because of the aggression of Na'Vi, they couldn't really fall back. They don't know if anyone's flanking them. They, they, they were just kind of trapped in those halls, but they still make it work, taking those fights. And that bomb plan is, is almost, I mean, 
almost winning that round, but that bomb plan is just huge. That's the, that's the well, exactly what they could have done in that situation. Luminosity just did a very good job of slowing down the game. Navi, they had all the momentum going their way. They had control of the situation. Had they just kind of committed to it for an FNX, they would have run into a fired up Navi ready to hit the shots. The fact that they ran down that clock so much allowed for Navi to cool off. And then Fur obviously just goes ham in the clock. I mean, he actually manages to make it possible for it to be that 1v1. So huge play from Fur to start things off already. But Navi, as you guys can see, nearly full rifles across the board. And they aren't even cheating too much with the SMGs. It's only Edward going for one. I'm wondering if Navi didn't have a conversation before this uh, game started saying, L let's come out, you know, just swinging. Let's yeah. make sure that we're super yeah. aggressive. And maybe that's why Seize thought, I'm going to keep going because of th this was our game plan, you know, just keep pushing on, keep putting on the pressure. And it did almost cost them here. But this time, Navi not having any issues cleaning up against this. Uh, this pistol round. Yeah, they're doing a fine job. Yeah, they did kind of seem like they, even even yesterday in the semis against Astralis, they seemed like they had this mindset where it's like they're known as the much more slow paced, calculated team, you know, letting the clock wind down before they make their move, but against Astralis and, and even here, this early aggression, maybe believing that it's going to try and catch some of their opponents off guard by just getting hyper aggressive in the early portions of these rounds. Now, both of these teams are known for their slow pace, their tactical approach to the game. It's not so much rush out of them, it's much more about map control and then executing a clean strat once they figured out where they want to go. But the chant has begun, and it's the first buy round coming in here for Luminosity. Fallen, he had just enough money for that AWP with the Kevlar to go with it. Four rifles picked up, very light on the nades, and Flamey, he's actually going to get the dunk shot in. Guardian gets tagged down at 22. And it's just tit for tat so far. They're so low on Na'Vi. If Luminosity can catch Flamey or Guardian out of position, this could go their way still. Mid control now for Luminosity, but they are down a player. But look at all the damage that's been done on Flamey and Guardian. They can get back into this very, very easily. But while these smokes are up, there's not too much visibility. They don't have a lot of intel. So they've got to just bide this out for a little bit longer. So plenty of time on the clock. Fallen looking to punish a mistake. Oh, yeah, and Edward, he's thinking about it. Edward, he's got it in his head that he might want to go for that shoulder peek, but he decides, no, we don't actually have any eyes on mid. And it is a pretty high percentage of the time that Fallen, you know, he likes to camp there and just sit and wait for somebody to peek. And also, Luminosity don't have any grenades. If they had a smoke for window here, maybe they could actually force that peak just by putting up the smoke, because then Edward would have sort of had to have gone and looked. But all they have is a single Molotov here, so there it is. now he's finally walked past, which is really poor timing for Luminosity. Edward in a good position here, but Cold Sierra, that's a peak with a Galil as well. He's going to win the next fight, taking out Flamey, and he's very good on this map. So right now, Navi, they've got to be worried, even though it's a 2 on 3 seized in the back line by the benches here, and the bomb. He's still making its way over there. There's 35 seconds, so if they wanted to rotate back, they definitely could. Fur going to be going down all on Cold Sierra. You can see the patience of Cold, though, too, just trying to cut off rotations, and now he's in such a tough spot. Yeah, and Zeus just heard the step. Zeus heard that landing, and so he was close enough. We already see a little bit of a rotation coming out from Navi, but Cold's going to win the first duel straight up. Tries to get back out into the window. 15 seconds left. This isn't a whole lot of time. He doesn't have much room for error here. And the chant begins. Can he get it? No. Oh, Guardian ten seconds. has everything going for him, basically, coming out onto short like that. There just wasn't enough time for Cole to maneuver. I mean, you nailed it. No, no nades to work with whatsoever in that round. So the early, the early buy on that third round, despite having the money with it for the AWP, not able to get anything done with it. You can see how patient they're trying to play it. Just allow one duel to be one over that B bomb site, and then Cold's position gets so much better in that window room on catwalk, trying to cut off rotations, trying to see if you can get one more pick before they could commit. But without nades, they're in such a tough spot to find that opening kill. The money for Navi not quite looking good enough yet to, uh, to take any kind of a losses. And Luminosity, I mean, maybe they could have gone for like Tech 9 Force up here, just trying to see if they could just shut them out early. Seems like they, on the other hand, are playing a slightly more safer game. They're just buying a little bit here, but not too much. And Seize is going to spot the first engagement here. And they're actually trying to run up behind. He's reloading. They're getting very close right now. He has to fall off the ledge. And they're just raining down on the bomb side. Way too many people coming in. Edward going to pick up the one kill. But it should be a bomb plant. And with Fur getting that shot on Edward, now we have got to be worried. This should be an easy cleanup round for them. And suddenly, it's gone south already. And Luminosity, they're dug into this bomb site here. This after plant, now we, they're a man down. Trying to see if they can make their way in soon. So many angles. He got down to Cold Sierra. Flamey and Guardian finally with some return kills. And Flamey with the SMG. Oh, he's doing so much work! It's gonna be the triple kill. Flamey saving them, just like in the pistol round. That puts him at a 10-0 and 1 scoreline. But another sick round from Luminosity, doing so much with so little. Just a couple flashbangs completely catch out that B defense. Plant three kills. You mentioned it before the round started. The money does not look great for Navi. They're still after this buy. They're gonna be, they're gonna be fine with the length they can have in this round, but their money is going to be a little bit low. It's a very dangerous situation still where Luminosity, they've lost four in a row, but a single win is going to reset that money.
This has got to be a, a pretty good feeling for Na'Vi, though, considering all eyes are on Guardian. The video describing Na'Vi at the beginning, huge Guardian focus. But Flamey, he is definitely a big part of why Na'Vi are here right now in this Grand Finals. He continues to deliver on that rifle, and he's off to a terrific start here on this first map. Four rounds, he's already up to 10 frags. And now Luminosity, they're able to buy again. And this time they have a few more nades to work with. It doesn't look, look like they actually want to waste too much time. Fallen, he's going to go for the aggressive peak, looking into jungle, but they're committing to this A site. Not a nade to tell Navi to get them prepared for this push. Luminosity, they're already rushing out. Flamey will find the kill on a fur, but there's Cold and Taco bringing it back to a three on three. Still no bomb plant. Phoenix is putting it down. There's not even a smoke for CT spawns. That's a massive risk to take, but it works out. So is putting three people out of apartments without any grenades, but that worked as well. And with Cold actually still lurking in middle, this is going to be a very tough retake for Na'Vi. He's going to get a good kill in there. Fallen up in the apartments, and now that Cold has gone down, he has a bit of an issue here. They do not have, and that misses the grenade. They still get the kill. Seuss to pick up a triple. With that missed Molotov, that could have gone horribly wrong. So many kills going out, and this is Luminosity. They've had three plants in these first five rounds, and they can't win any of the post plants. You can see Fallen, that missed Molotov. It, it's almost so excited to see it because he wants to peek. He knows he has the chance there, but Zeus with a very, very quick shot. So 5-0 quickly for the defense on the Na'Vi side. Yeah, Zeus isn't even a primary offer for Na'Vi, so the fact that he can hit the shots like that, it's huge. And man, the, 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 basically the frustration is going to be mounting here for Luminosity because as you said, right, we're getting three plants, we're getting the plant down. What's going on, guys? Like, how is this actually happening that we're not able to hold on to these bomb sites? Even when we're in favor favorable positions, Navi keep finding a way to win out. Well, Guardian once again in window, but I love it. This is a six track coming out. They're just covering all short with smokes. Unfortunately for them, Edward, he's in his favorite spot. He's just sitting on the other side, not a flash to, well, basically hinder him at all. Instead, they just run right into the blender, but Cold is still alive, and he takes out Edward to bring it back to a three on four. This is a good start. Fallen gonna be getting the first kill of the grand finals for himself here as Guardian goes down. It's now a three on three. They need this round, Luminos. They can't let Navi keep getting away with it. Even the two on three is winnable. Shot like that, it does actually tag up Flamey but not enough to get the kill. The bomb is down on the side, so they have to commit to this. There's no rotating anywhere else, even if they have the time. And Cold, is he gonna be the one to open it up? He's sneaking quite far in there, right on the edge. What a peek. Crouches into the angle and Seized is gonna be going down. Fallen, he had the angle for it there, but can't take the shot. Cold Zero winning another duel there, and it's gonna be a triple. Well, it's a 1v2 for Cold Zero, turned into a 1v1. And you can hear the crowd in the background as well. The bomb is on the side. He's got 40 seconds now and trying to see if he can make it into Kitchen. Flamey has got to be wondering where is this going to come from. He finds the perfect angle and he will be able to steal the round again. That's now three rounds that have come down to Flamey getting the, the final kills here. And again, 12, 1 and 2 for him. Well, this is why he's considered, uh, the, the desk talked about it, one of the best players in the world. This is why Navi is considered one of the best teams in the world. Everyone on this team is rising to the occasion when needed. And another clutch goes away from Luminosity. And now you got to start feeling. With his dominant defense so far, when does the timeout come in for Luminosity? If they don't win this next round, it's going to be so difficult for them down 7-0. That's when they'll probably take the tactical. Because they've tried slow pace strategies. They've tried to switch up the pace as well. Nothing's worked so far. If they don't get a plant here, I think there has to be a fail safe where if you're up 7-0, you have to call for the timeout. Very quick change of pace coming in here for Luminosity, making their way onto the A site, not wasting any time, not waiting for the smoke to clear on pit. But it is going to be Edward to find the first kill, and it's cold already down here for Luminosity. So now it's up to Fur. It's up to FNX. They need to step up to make the difference. Flamey will still take one with them. Zeus chimes in but somehow it's still a three on two. They're cutting it very close. Well, that's an easy kill there. Guardian very low. He was allowed to live for a lot longer because again, they didn't have any grenades going to the bomb site. Now it's the after plant again. And now they've been winning every single one so far. Can they do it a seventh time here? C is going to be picking up and taking out Fallen, just spraying with that M4A1. And FNX in the corner. He's out of the open here. He still wins the fight, goes for the peak. He knows that what's there. He sprays, and there it is. He gets the triple kill. And Luminosity are in the grand finals. Finally, it's going to be 6 1. And showing a little bit of sign of life here. Yeah, and who more fitting to, to win that round than FNX? A player who doesn't always have the numbers of Cold, of Fur, of Taco recently, but he's possibly one of the biggest impact players they have. The amount of times this guy could just get the crucial kills and rounds and turn everything around, it's crazy. So, I mean, you, you expect nothing less out of him in that situation. Yeah, there's, every team has that kind of player that with that quality. Crims for Fnatic, you know, Rain for, for FaZe, FNX. He always comes through in the clutch, it seems, for Luminosity. But this time, Navi are the ones changing up the pace, and they're going to go aggressive in Palace. One-for-one one trade as Edward peeks into pit. He takes out Fur, but he gets dropped down to 12 HP. 
cold down on 20, and it's seized and set to find Taco, and that was up in B Apartments. So now Luminosity, they're at a bit of a loss as to what to do here. It says a lot about this, this half so far for Luminosity that after six rounds, Navi has a scout. They're already basically out of nades. They have one more flashbang on Zeus. Guardian's grabbing a lot of information in the middle right now, and he's going to spawn out Fallen in the open. Takes the duel, but can't win it initially, and eventually that's FNX again. The huge kill on Fallen, a second one. That was a sick frag from Fallen. Brings it back. And now they have the man advantage, Luminosity, going on to the A side. It looks like Cold. He's been hanging around in Palace this entire time. He's got eyes on it. And Edward, if he comes through jungle, Cold's going to have the angle on him. So this could get a little dicey here for Navi. They just needed one bullet on Fallen, and, and that would have been it. They would have had a great position to be in there. Uh, this crowd is definitely fantastic today. Seized an Edward here, and Edward on very low HP. 40 seconds, they have one Molotov, so they can sort of force him back a bit, but they don't have the full smoke coverage, and that will definitely make a difference here as Luminosity head onto the A bomb site. And surely now, Navi, they must have heard it. Seized getting into position just with the scout, which you're pointing out here. Edward gonna be traded quickly now. Both the Luminosity members low on health, but he misses the first shot. Tech nine up, he's gonna get Cold Zero. And now it's a one on one with just 17 seconds and people are getting the chant going. Fallen, he has to pick up the bomb. He's got 10 seconds. He can't play this game for too much longer. Otherwise, Seize is gonna be able to run up close, pick up the bomb and just get the kill. Jumping once with the scout, that's gonna be enough. He's behind the box, is Seized. Is he gonna risk it? He gets closer instead. One second to get that plant and now Seized. A bullet for either player is all that's gonna make the difference here. Fallen, hiding behind the boxes. They need that second round of mercy. He's gonna reset them and there it is. The captain of the Brazilian team picking up a second kill for himself, and that'll make it 6 2. Playing such a dangerous game, and actually, Luminosity that round, late in the late stages of that round, they play it so smart. Fallen incredibly low is the first one to come up a ramp. He's there. If he gets hit by any bullet, he dies, but that'll at least get the information over to his teammates of where they need to peek from Palace for. He doesn't end up falling, he wins the round so close. He played that so patiently with only a few seconds left on that plan. Really hoping for Seize to make the mistake there. But again, Fallen, we, there's also another saying, which is that Fallen always comes through for Luminosity when they're down, and it's a big round. So you have FNX with the, t with the clutch. Nice little pop flash here. Fire completely caught off guard. Edward will find the kill eventually, but he's not expecting FNX to be there. So they do bring it back. Fallen takes out Guardian. That was on short, and now they actually have control of the situation. Although Taco, he's lurking in Palace. He's going to see this double push. He's not going to spot the second man, however, Flamey. He's going to be able to pick up an AK, and now Flamey with an AK, we know how dangerous he can be. Yeah, that's never a weapon you want to be able to give up. At least he has no armor, very susceptible to aim punch, but meanwhile, Luminosity is going around towards the other bombsite. They're going over towards B, and now Cold spotted out Seized in window, so they have the intel on where the last two players are for Navi. Luminosity, this should be a pretty clean win from here. The question is, is Flamey going to keep this AK-47, or is he going to try and do something with it? And right now he's just playing passively at the A bomb site, so just gonna try and hold this weapon into the next round. Yeah, absolutely. He's only sitting on two thousand dollars right now. I mean, granted, they're gonna go on to their third loss, uh, their third loss round in a row, so they will be getting a decent amount of money, Navi. But if he can hold on to the AK, that would be perfect, especially considering he's hitting so many shots right now, Flamey. That one shot headshot potential could make the difference here for Navi to get control back in this first half. It was good communication as well, because you were pointing out they they spotted the uh, seat in the window there, and FNX actually rotating into kitchen to catch him coming in, so. Yeah, it's a safe <laughs> jump going on as well, definitely. I mean, why not? Just, uh, we got, uh, the, the more the better right now. We've got a stadium full of people. There really are not many seats left here. And Flamey, he has been playing out of his mind. I mean, does it worry you at all that we've got Flamey at 14 kills and then Guardian at 5? I mean, what happens if Guardian also sort of just, you know, peeks back to his own level. If they're already getting a bunch of rounds here in RV, and then if Guardian shows up, that's got to be a bit scary. Yeah, I mean, anytime Guardian gets into that mode, every, anytime he shows up, it just, it's a really scary situation for the opponent. But with Flamey as well, this is why they're just so dangerous at the moment. What is when this buy? Out of uh, Navi? Yeah. yeah. They're going for it. This is very risky. They don't have a lot of utility behind it either. No, and two of them don't have Kevlar? Hey, this is really a big play here. Flamey peeked out, but he had that nade into Palace that slowed Taco down just enough to make that safe. Guardian's now got the angle, though, and Taco, he's just trying to get a maximum amount of information. He knows now, okay, Guardian's got the angle on me, just heard the off shot. And so we have a general idea of where Guardian's playing from right now, but Fur is getting into position. Look at how this mid control for Luminosity is so much more successful when they have the nades they need to utilize it. We saw it earlier in the half where they didn't have much smokes or molotovs or flashbangs. Now it works perfectly for them. 
They are going to make the play, it seems, into connector here. Edward might get caught off guard, and yes, for instant headshot from him. Little does he know, however, Flamey's he's holding close, and if he overextends, exactly, that can happen. Guardian holding from CT with that AWP, lands the shot, does not miss the opportunity. And now with a minute left on this clock, Luminosity, they're in a four on four. They still have some utility, however, they still have some nades to work with, so if they do choose to go for the execute, it is still possible. That's so smart from Cold. Breaks the vent to force Zeus into a peak, but Zeus wins the battle anyways, so it doesn't work out for him. Just a two on four left. Navi getting uh, back into this round in a really big way. Letting Fur that far up into Connector can be really dangerous. That's such a central part of the map. Uh, so they got to be careful they don't let that happen too much because surely Luminosity will, will exploit that if they realize that that is an option. But they're at least walking onto the bomb side without making much noise or even being uh, discovered right now. There comes the spray, but oh, Flamey somehow still kills Fallen before Taco is able to reply. So. What could have been a two on three is now just a one on three of Taco. And I don't see him really making that. This is going to be almost impossible with 10 seconds left. The bomb, he's just picking it up now, but then I don't think they're going to allow him. He can't even fake it in. There's Guardian getting the shot. Second kill of the round for him. And a 7 3 scoreline favoring Navi here in the first half of the first map. Yeah, that's sick stuff from Guardian. Playing it passively, getting a couple kills in the round. Just making sure that plan. I mean, not even presenting himself to. to be killed and potentially lose that round, give Luminosity any kind of a uh, window of opportunity to even take that win. So really good stuff from Navi. And now, I mean, that broken, or that, that weak This bomb. is what I thought, this is what I thought he actually went for the wall bank and tool booth. I was wondering, I was wondering, like, wait a second, I saw the wall bank signal there, he was jumping around. Pretty sick. Sick play. Well, now look, uh, I mean, this is two players over towards the A-bomb site, three in these B-halls, that's where the bomb is as well, set up in a little bit of a default. And look at the buy, though. Three Tech Nines on the Luminosity side, and they're going up against... There's, th there's four Molotovs left on Navi. Whenever an execution does come in, it's looking like it might be a little bit of a fake with two members applying pressure to A. But actually, it's the B members who start things off, and they've got to run through so much fire. They've got the bomb there as well, but they're actually just... To be a Taco, he's sacking himself, basically. He's trying to make as much noise over here as possible, and it has forced the rotation out of Navi, but Guardian still going to be able to pick off FNX, and he realizes now the game is up. They lose a man in mid. The bomb is still making its way up through Connector, and Taco trying to have an impact, and he is going to get the flank. Picks up one, and that opens it up for Fallen to come in for the second and the third. Two on two, but they're both so very low on HP luminosity. But they're going to find Guardian just wandering around out in the open. How does that happen? Now it's all on Edward here. Trying to see if he could walk in. He, spot he should have seen the gun barrel. He didn't. Looking for the shot. He's going to get down one. He needs one more kill. Taco's there. And Edward going to be picking up the double kill. And Navi, they win that round in spite of a great fake coming out of Luminosity. Luminosity gets Navi so disorganized. They have no idea what's coming. Taco, huge play from those vents but it's Edward, and it is this, Navi is just top to bottom, all their players. We saw Edward yesterday with a dominant match in Inferno against Astralis. Here, big clutch, one on two victory for him. It doesn't seem like it's a misfire, or is it? Taco instantly fought up with the AK and Kevlar, and he's got a couple of nades. It took a quite a bit more time for Luminosity, for the rest of Luminosity to come into it, because they're very low on money right now. But again, Luminosity, they're not willing to give up on this. 1v1 clutch, they know that Na'Vi, they cannot have much money right now, so why not? If they can win here, they can turn the tide their way, and they've certainly got the aim right now. It keeps coming down to these clutch scenarios. At some point, Luminosity, they have to turn, them, turn it their way. It's a big risk, though, with this kind of a buy, with this low of money after this. This is not, you know, a high percentage round for them to win. So they might have to be right back onto a save if they can't take this one. Well, they got the mid-control so far. Edward is the only one sort of, I mean, not even keeping eyes on it necessarily, but just li listening to what's going on. Seuss is in the window room on the other side. Cole looking for the opening shot here with the Tech-9, and he's going to win that fight. He didn't even look scared, just taking out Edward. And Taco right on the edge on the slope here. Flamey's on the other side. This is definitely not a good fight for Flamey to take with the MP9. Seuss is right behind them as well here. With the UMP in middle, but look at the bomb being rotated back towards the A-bomb site. Flamey, I think he's going to have a really hard time on this corner, but Seuss winning the fight against Fur. That means they can refocus on the slope. They're all coming out. He wins the first fight. He's going to be traded. That's still better than I would have thought, and now it's Seuss. So follow-up takes down Fallen. Guardian with a shot, and now Cold Sierra alone. You know, one on three, and they sort of have a pretty good idea where he is. He got that first kill in the middle. He's going to be walking out behind Seuss, but he just does a quick 180 and gets a triple with the UMP. LG with that buy, they're, they're trying to to break the money of Navi because you could see a couple SMGs were out there trying to keep that money low. So if they do end up winning one of these rounds at the end, they can string some together against just pistols, but it's not working out for them. And then this is the punish for that kind of a risk. Not able to get any rifles into this round. They only had one in the last one. 
So a couple rounds now where Navi's able to, you know, feast a little bit on, on a weaker buy. Yeah, this is going to mean a weaker buy for Luminosity coming up in the next round as well. Going into the 13th round now, it's pretty much a hard eco coming out from Luminosity. They have invested in three smokes and a couple of flashes. So basically, the whole game plan here is get the smokes down, run onto the site, cross your fingers, and hope you can get that bomb plant so you can get the bonus money that comes with losing a round after getting the bomb planted on the T side. Flamey holding close with the MP9 again. Not sure if he actually spotted out the feet there, but he is going to be ready for Taco when he comes charging out. Now goes for the peak, sees more players. Zeus is there with the spray. It's just not going to pan out here for Luminosity. The strategy falls flat. Yeah, this is, uh, once again, just trying to get that plant. A little bit of extra money. The losing bonus, though, is at four rounds. They're going to be able to buy up, though it might be a little bit sketchy if they want to put an AWP on Fallen. I don't know if we'll be able to have armor. So yeah, they just go straight into the five AKs. They have all the Molotovs, they have all the smokes they can need for any kind of an execution. But they're looking at a really rough scoreline if they can't win this gun round. And unlike in, in, in sort of previously in this half, they don't have the option any longer of, of sort of winning around and enforcing an eco, right? Now we've just survived with three, then now four members alive. So their economy is looking quite good uh, going into the 50th round, no matter what uh, LG do here. But they're trying to get really, really quickly up onto the catwalk, into the B-bomb side. Seized the zone holding here, and he picks up a kill early on. That's going to buy so much time. Seized with a really good hold so far. He's going to peek again and takes a second kill. Cold Zero going down. Seized now coming into the game, and that's a third. He actually... He gets that kill on fur and looks for a fourth kill. Can't quite get it. FNX with a reply. You might think it's a little bit too late here. Edward going to come in and trade that kill. And Fallen alone up in the apartments and with so much time left. I mean, he has the bomb. That's maybe the only silver lining. This is nearly impossible. Yeah, his only real option here is, is kind of like wait out a little bit. Be very, very patient. Maybe catch someone from Navi off guard. Let someone rotate away so you can find some one-on-one -on -one battles. But Navi's got everything covered at the moment. You know, they have that triangle on the B site. What Navi are unsure of right now, and this is what Fallen's really waiting for, is that they might rotate an extra man off. But he gets that kill, catches him looking the wrong way. It's not gonna win. He came so close to turning that into a 1v1, another clutch situation. But Flamey will lay him low in the end, and we go into 11-3 with Luminosity having to go into a force buy. I mean, what, what the key play there is basically the fact that Luminosity, they're a little disjointed. They're a little too early on short. The guys in apartments weren't able to put any pressure because I believe C's put that, in, that incendiary down. It was holding them back long enough so that the guys on short came out just a bit too early. C's able to fall back onto the site without any punishment. That's not, you cannot allow that if you're Luminosity. Yeah, his mobility was so good and there was so much utility. There were so many nades on Luminosity, but C's wasn't pressured by anything. Wasn't blind, didn't have any smokes yeah. in front of him, able to get a couple free kills from range. And now look, now they have to go against the auto sniper on Zeus. I mean, you look at the setup at that last round, it looked like it was going to be great, but Zeus going to be going down early on here. That was Galil from Fallen taking the entry. Frank, they need this fourth, fourth round desperate. Luminosity are very far behind in this map. Grenade comes out, and counter grenade as well, and there's Taco and FNX picking up a couple of kills. Edward with the only refrag here so far, and Guardian and Edward. This retake surely cannot happen. It should be impossible at this point. The angles are all too good for Luminosity. They have all three points at this point. It's all going to be down to Guardian now, and Edward working together. They have the nades, and Guardian hits the shot onto Fur. Two players waiting by Pit and one still in CT, and this might be, you know, what undoes Navi, although Edward is going to be thorough. He's going to check, and he wins out. But a 1v2, just not going to happen when Fallen has the high ground, and another big kill coming in for Fallen. He started off the round strong by taking out Zeus with that auto sniper. He ends it and gives Luminosity that fourth round going into the second half. But this is still a fantastic scoreline here for Navi. Yeah, the crucial battle in that round was actually that Molotov nade combo over towards jungle was just sick. Perfectly timed. Stops any of the rotation. Gets him two kills right off the mm. back of it. So just to put some perspective on what this first half was, Navi winning 11 rounds, and seven out of them were either a, a, a 1v1 or a 1v2. But Navi only survived with one or two members in, in seven out of the 11 rounds. That, that should tell you something about just how close the Brazilian side got to, to getting a much, much better scoreline here. Well, even you look in the, in the early stages, in the first you know, five, six rounds, how many plants there were. There were three of them over half of the, or about half the rounds. Uh, we're all plants and not just not being able to win those post-plant situations. You'll remember it was that third round or the fourth round when they had actually, um, it was like a four on two. When they, I mean, it, was an, it was a save for Luminosity, but still they had a massive advantage and not able to hold on, not able to set up any crossfires. But what a half from Flamey. He started this off so well with this pistol clutch, set the tone. And that's actually, I mean, he's playing against the man, well, Fur, who kind of dropped off. I mean, he got the quad kill in the pistol round. He tried to turn it back, but after that, he kind of just vanished. He ends the half with six kills. And he's one of the heavy hitters on Luminosity. Everybody on Na'Vi, they're all in double digits. 
But him and Taco kind of lagging behind here. So if Luminosity want to stand a chance, when both of these teams are so even in individual talent, in, the, in, in, in rather, in individual skill, if you have a couple of players who are lagging behind, that's just not going to cut it. Luminosity, they need all five to wake up here for the second half. It's going to have to be another sick comeback, like just like what we saw last night. Sick, but depressing. Why you, right? why you have to go there, Moses? <laughs> well, Puckett did it, you know, so we might as well. It's too late. All right. <laughs> Should we just decide to delete that from our memories for a little bit? Yeah, I say let, let, let the past be the past, at least, at least for a little bit, you know, at least until the next episode of By the Numbers or something <laughs> like that. Um, look, we are going to be heading into the second half here, the grand finals. It's still only the first map. So uh, way too soon to really call anything, but you could tell that Navi, as they have been all throughout this tournament, that they're playing out of their minds. Mm -hmm. And this, this was actually my worry. I was a bit scared that maybe they would be peaking too soon. You know, you don't want to play your best games in the quarter and semifinals and then, you know, have a really bad game in the grand finals. But um, that doesn't seem to be the case at all. So we're going to head into it here. Edward running uh, into the middle, just controlling top mid for a little bit. And looks like a fairly aggressive hold on middle, actually, from Luminosity here. They, they want to see if they can find this. That could be dangerous because Taco and Cold Sierra, they're on the other side, setting up for it. And Cold Sierra shutting down Flamey. Flashbang comes out, but Navi turn around for it. They're going to be trading effectively so far. Taco needs more kills. He's going to get a headshot. He's looking for one more. He's got one bullet left. He misses it. The knife is out. They're going to try and chase him down and seized. Going to be successful. So still a 2 on 3 and they just made all of the difference there. The fact that Taco and Cold were able to inflict so much damage. Edward, he's been whittled down to 40 HP coming up through mid as well. And he sees sitting on the seven. So now with a minute 10 left, <laughs> what can Navi do to actually try and turn it around here, Moses? Well, Seize has no HP, so he's just hanging up for B, watching for a flank, watching for a push. The real playmaker has got to be Edward. He's in the position inside this window room. He's got to be able to come through the murder hole, go towards Fallen and Kitchen and Market. FNX is at the top mid, so Edward, he might not even s expect that whatsoever, so he's got to be very, very careful, but Seize just doesn't have the HP to make any kind of a play. Maybe Edward does. Yeah, There's he... the opening headshot, at least, to try and make that work. Fall in the fur, they still have a lot of health left here to try and see if they can bring this round home. They don't currently have a kit picked up. That's why maybe the one silver lining I can think of for Na'Vi right now. They're going to get onto the site. And Fur is quite far away from the action as well. See if that Diffuse kit is going to make the big difference here in a 2v2. It's such low HP, it's all about the angles and catching somebody off guard. Fur is just now rotating over from that B site. He's going to walk by Edward's position. Fallen is going to be taking point, not even waiting for his teammate. He's actually just all out trying to find the info. Where are these guys playing from? There's the tap, and Seize doesn't even give it away. He's going to step up, and Fallen's going to catch him. Fur with the kill on Edward. Just not enough HP to really go for the big plays there to get out into a long, drawn-out fight. They needed the instant headshots. Fallen just outplayed Seize so hard. <laughs> right on, just taps it and goes the opposite direction. Seize goes to check and realizes he's been fooled. So it's an easy kill, but Navi gets the plant. Again, much like the first person around, that plant is, is like, that was the best they could have done. Look at the HPs in that. Only take like one bullet each person. Look at Starix. Look at how animated he is right here. He's, he's, he's really commanding this team right now. That's quite impressive. We have to give the six-man credit. Same for Zeus over on Luminosity's side. I mean, sure, Fallen has much more. Well, he is the in-game leader. Zeus is there to support him. But Starx is the one calling the shots for Na'Vi. Yeah, I mean, Thorin mentioned this this concept. You, you know, a good chess player. I feel like the chess player there is probably Starx. But he's got some pretty good pieces on the board right now. And they are in an 11-5 lead. And they're going into the 17th round here. Some uh, controlling underpass and Edward at top middle. If they, if they can get a kill in here early on, that's going to put a little bit of stress, I think, on Luminosity's side. Yeah, controlled smokes in mid from Navi. Very coordinated. They want to get this control. They're, looks like they're boosting up in the wind. That's going to be Guardian. There's one up in the vents and fur. Swift execution. Yeah, ready and waiting for it. And there is no chance to reply. Flamey sees they're trying to make it happen. They are looking for the fight, but they are going to get caught out. Flamey dead in pit and Zeus now having to rotate around. So they're just getting whittled down here, Na'Vi. They're down to three players. Luminosity still have all five alive, although they don't really have much utility to work with anymore. Luminosity to hold this off. Doesn't matter when you have the rifles and the advantage of range. That's the whole point. You're looking for those long range fights and you catch them out that way. Zeus has recovered a FAMAS, so we'll see if he can actually achieve anything here with it, but he's not going to manage it in the end. FNX. Seems like Luminosity are really coming alive here in this second half. They're winning all the duels flat out. Taco just assassinates Seize and that's it. It's over. Yeah, no plant in this round, and with that investment now, this is basically going to have to be just a full save, just a hard... You can, you can see Guardian, he's up at $2,700, so he's the one who wants to go for that AWP, keeping that extra seven or 800. 
Well, we've got the 18th round is uh, that's going to be coming up, and you know, Moses, people are going to be blaming you if if this you know if this comes into another comeback situation here because you did bring it up. That's how it works. Well, thanks for calling me out on it. Yeah, yeah, you know, you I think I think you've already you've already had some good times this tournament, haven't you? What's that yeah. thing you said on the desk? <laughs> Something about GG. <laughs> well. <laughs> 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 Thank you, guys. Uh, we have hot mics are fun mics, guys. Yeah, that's that's a very good saying indeed. Taco and Cold Sierra, they are in the B bomb side. They have the exact same setup as in the pistol round, similar. And I mean, this time it might be even better. There's no armor on these Navi players. They, this could be an actual slaughter. Yeah, they're gonna get shredded, and they're going for a similar setup here. Luminosity. Taco's got that pop flash ready to go. Cold is holding right next to him, and so it's going to be that one-two combination punch here. It's the same as their pistol round. And actually, that, yep. might, that might help Navi, I mean, figure out what's going on, but they just don't have anything to deal with it. There you go. Boop. And they all just get murdered. Taco double kill for him. Cold slaps down Guardian. They will find the man trying desperately to plant on the site. Great deny there, actually, man. Cold Zera saving it, because if Seized gets that bonus money, it's looking much better for Navi in the next round. They would have a full buy across the board. Now, Navi, they aren't quite there. They're going to be limited on nades. So I always, I always identify that position with Pronax, but obviously he plays it alone, but Pronax timing in that position is really scary for some reason. I can't really explain that. What I do like about the way that they're setting it up is that Cold Sierra is actually watching the flashbang, you know? He's watching it for like the first seconds, then he turns around and then they just go for the slaughter. It's actually uh, a very, very good setup. Well, and if you're also, if you're a terrorist coming at that and you see that pop flash kind of come out, even if you're blind, you're, you're always going to expect the peak to come from that right side. So Cold peaking a good point. on the other, is, is what's expected to throw them off just a little bit. Well, Navi's chance to um, make their mark on the second half here. 11-7 is the current split, so only a four-round lead for Navi, which is uh, at this level, which is the absolute highest, obviously. Not necessarily that much. Things can quickly get out of control. Taco trying to return the spray there. And he's spraying back with an M4A4, which is significant. It was an M4A1, then the terrorist on the other side wouldn't know because it makes no traces through the smoke. But he can see where that bullet is coming from. So you got to be careful about spraying too much uh, like that. Again, though, Navi, I mean, there's a minute left in this round, and they're out of smokes. So they have to do something with what they just laid down. This has to have an impact. And it looks like a lot of players huddled up in these B tunnels. Taco's the lone man at this bomb site. LG does not have a read on what's happening quite yet. No, they don't actually have much information at all. Fur, with that smoke going down a window, it means that Fur has to try and play from connector. FNX is keeping an eye there as well. Taco has spotted it, though, and the game is up. Now the rotation has to come out here from Luminosity. Fur, FNX, hauling over here, but Taco, he's going to be the first line, and he loses versus Guardian. Cold on short. Is he going to be able to actually bring it back? Big spray from him, but Edward with the backstab settles it, and it's a man advantage now going into the retake here for Luminosity. Guardian is trying to force their hand, trying to go for the shoulder peak, and Edward will be the one to get the flank, but Fur drops the bomb carrier, and now it's all on Edward. 1v2, falling with the angle, and Fur on the site, and it's all over. Fallen, sick shot, and just holding the angle patiently gets it all done. Wow, I mean, that um, that was a bit scary, and I think uh, if I, yeah, I could be wrong, but I'm, I swear I saw Guardian killing one of his teammates in the middle of all of that. Um, yep. I, I mean, he did, yeah. yeah, one one team kill in the middle of it, that's not going to put the whole team on tilt. But, you know, it's not like Guardian has had uh, an amazing game yet. He's still bottom of the scoreboard, just like he was in the first half. So, you know, for him personally, maybe that's a bit frustrating. That should that should end pretty soon because he's going to be able to have the AWP. The thing with their two buys that they've really had in this, in this half so far is, you know, they've been not the greatest buys. They've been on low economy buys with very little utility. They can barely afford the rifles and, and, and all the smokes they'll need. So he hasn't gotten to the op yet. And the scary part now is Luminosity. They've got two. Yeah, this is the frustrating thing from Navi. They never really seem to prioritize Guardian. He's always willing to force up with his teammates. But this is, again, similar to what Luminosity were doing in their T side. Navi, they just want to get this bomb plant happening. But FNX, he's only going to trade one for one. That isn't quite good enough. But the rotation is going to come in here from Luminosity. And now all they have to do is be patient and wait for the smokes to clear and close in on Navi after that. Yeah, that's got to be the game plan here. No reason to sacrifice yourself. All right, they get the bomb plan. That's not the end of the world here. Fallen picking up a kill, and Edward trying to get close with the tech line, but Taco there is the bodyguard, and they did exactly what you said, Summer. So I think that, that's, that's, uh, that's some nice calm play from the CT side here. Keeping it cool. Yeah, especially with Taco rotating through CT spawn to, to assist Fallen with the M4 in case anyone, like we just saw, try to get close to that tech nine. But this double off setup, we saw it yesterday against Liquid. This is what allowed Luminosity to claw back into that match. And again, they're playing from a deficit, but first round of the double off setup, I mean, they look good. 
Now they have Guardian, though. This is where he needs to step up. This is where he needs to ha start having that, that big impact we know he can. I mean, this, I mean, he was talking about it in the video as well going into this match, how he, he, how he handles the pressure, but this is when it's at its worst. Now his team really needs him to step up. He needs to have that impact with the sniper rifle. It's not about him underperforming. It's about his team needing him now. And Na'Vi, standard fare for them, it seems, although Guardian might be going into underpass. No, he's up in apartments right now. He's actually looking to see if Taco's playing aggressive, something that Luminosity have been doing at the beginning of this CT half. They have been you know, going with the aggressive peaks, aggressive setups, looking towards B apartments. Guardian was hoping to punish that. Yeah, well, especially because they know Taco jump peaked the last round where they sent a lot B, so he's just trying to go for that early shot, see if he can catch Taco out of the air. I do want to point out, you see, see Cold Sierra sort of turning around up in Catwalk there, looking into the wall. That's something pro players do, because you, if you look at the audio source, you can actually determine where people are going. So it's not like he's looking through the wall, um, but um, that's just how it works, in case you're wondering and you're confused about how that works out. We do have some mid control coming in, or at least a play for it here for Na'Vi, but they need uh, some good grenades up to make sure that they don't just get entried here for in a very dangerous position. Pushed up far, going for the first kill, and Suit will be falling. Seized, he really wants to return that, but there's no reason why LG should be fighting this now. About 50 seconds left, and it looks like the other part of that Na'Vi push that was supposed to go into the A-bomb site is setting up outside, but how do they finish this now? This is such an intriguing way to play mid control if your CTs. Three members over towards Catwalk, just spotting for B, playing a retake on that bomb site, but Taco and Fur being aggressive. No one peeking from window, no pe one, one peeking from connector either. And we got the chant going right now, but Navi, they need it. Being down a man and not having many nades to work with makes their lives very difficult. But it is going to be a commit to the A side here from them. All three players from Luminosity who are over on the B side are going to have to start rotating because the, the defense on the A side is about to get overwhelmed. Although, as I say that, FNX had fallen, start the party, seized in. Connector will pick up the rotator, but instantly traded and Guardian. Just like that, he's lost his entire team. The lack of nades, the lack of nades is having an impact here. When you try and rush onto that A site and you have to worry about all of these angles, a couple of flashes can make a big deal, but Guardian, Two he's seconds. having that impact, and he is going to die right before the clock goes up. Six shot from Cold. But Guardian should have made that money. He should have died right before, and he did. Well, 11 and 10. I mean, the comeback is definitely looking very good at the moment. We've got th six rounds in a row here for Luminosity, which is exactly what Na'Vi got uh, when they had their first half going into the CT side here. So that also should tell you that it's too soon to start sort of uh, losing all hope if you're on the Na'Vi side here. Still, uh, still some, some good counter strike to come, but this is, from a, from a viewership point of view, this is what we wanted, right? If you're uh, watching this game and enjoying it, then you'd want this to go the full distance here. Navi, they have money. Everyone except for Zeus could buy an AK and armor. Um, what, do, what do you think, Moses? I mean, obviously they are going to make the buy. You don't, you don't save with this kind of, a, of an economy. Um, but what's the play here? What haven't they done yet on the, on the terrorist side, Navi? Hey, I mean, if I'm Navi, I, I actually maybe go for a little bit of a half buy to try maybe the Tech Nine and armor. But you, you need to get an op in Guardian's hands. You need, you need him to start getting going in this half. And if they buy here when he's only at 3,700. Uh, that's too many rounds that you've that you've squandered with him not having the weapon he's known for. All the players, we've had that segment where every single player said Guardian's the best op in the world. Put it in his hands, let him win you some rounds, put him in mid, don't don't put him in the B halls. Let him let him control the map with that AWP, see if he can get a pick. I mean, I don't have a count in my head, but there is also an argument to me sometimes that, you know, if your if your AWP player isn't really connecting, I mean, granted he hasn't had he hasn't had it in his hands a lot, but um, we haven't been seeing some of those super flashy plays from him. Um, sometimes we do see players, even even on the Navi team, sort of step back and say, "All right, you do the opening instead, and I'll just play with the AK." Um, we go with the double off strategy from time to time. Seized is there, yeah. but right now Zeus is usually the man who drops. And there we go. That's what I was All waiting right. for. I was waiting to see it. You obviously, you guys can't. You'll see it in 15 seconds. Heh. But um, <laughs> I was curious to see if something, because it's usually it's the three stars basically who had the actual money. Seized, Flamey. And, well, Edward wasn't quite able to get the uh, AWP, but I was wondering who was going to go glass cannon out of Seized and Flamey. Who was going to actually drop that AWP for Guardian, make sure that he had the sniper rifle in this key round. Wow. So, Seized sacrificing himself a lot for the team. The lack of armor means grenades, aim punch, and a whole lot of other things, too. It's going to be lethal and against those M4s as well. One bullet to the face and you're gone. Not if you have Kevlar and Helm. So, we'll see. 22nd round is coming up here. And uh, I mean, what a time to uh, what a time to be watching Counter Strike here. We just passed the 1.2 million viewership mark, I can tell, and uh, we're just getting started. So keep tuning in, get your friends involved. This is uh, yeah, this is where everything begins. Taco, oh, this is so cool. Change in pace. 
Time to take the fight to him. Taco, he peeks out. Oh, he thinks he's shooting from the wall, from the little room. He gets the angle wrong, and now Cold not able to trade. This might bait Navi into it. This might get them thinking, wait, we actually have an advantage here, but Cold, he's actually going to step in. He's on the hunt, and he hits the shot. And again, that was seized with no armor. If Taco had hit one bullet, he probably wins that fight immediately, but he just wasn't expecting it. Now, four versus four. Cold Zero low on health, and also defending the B-bomb side entirely alone. And FNX and Fur, they're sort of stacked on top of each other over on the balcony at the A-bomb side. Everyone is actually miles away for this rotation. Yeah, this has got to be a sick read that, that they've seen in demos or something, because no one has even started moving towards the B-bomb side. It's just cold there. He's down at 19 HP. He's got very little health to play with. It's got to be some sick shots if they end up going to that bomb site, but still, no one from Luminosity is even posturing to rotate. And look at the boost that's coming up as well from Guardian. That's not an angle that Cold could really expect. They even have grenades, and there's the shot. Guardian going to be going down. Cold Sierra doing a very, very fine job at the moment. That flick not going to connect, and he will drop, making it a full three-on-three -three retake here. And LG, they can't let Navi back into the game now. This will be the first round they'd win in the second half here. He's going to be falling, trying to see if he can make it out of Kitchen. FNX also trying to put some bullets through here. Rotation coming through from Fur on Catwalk, but it's very slow, and Suits, he actually makes that jump somehow. They don't get the shot in on him. There's going to be Edward going down. Now, a two on three. Flamey and Suits, they have to hold on to this round. They really can't let LG win and just continue this streak around that they have been on. That bomb has ticked for a long time, though, so now speed becomes a problem. Suits going to be taking down FNX, and it's a 2-1-2. Two -two. He's hiding in the back lines. Flamey gets a kill. Fallen, now it's a one-on-one, -on -one and he's going to try for the spray, and Flamey, he gets the shot. It's a double kill every single time. Flamey just stepping up. 21, four assists and 15 deaths. That's an incredible job from Flamey. That gets them their first round of the half, though. Now it's the struggle. Still, another situation where you have a weak buy because of your money, and you have to string them together. If they lose this, that's the hard reset late in the half, so Luminosity would be able to close that gap. So it's going to be tough for Navi. They do have the op still on Guardian, but he's the one now with no armor. They've only got three smokes to work with as well. This is the big round right here. They've just expended all of their money, Luminosity, so if they lose it, they're on eco. The same could be said for Navi. This could make all the difference. If Navi win it, they're close to picking up that first map. Luminosity, they get a second chance if they can pull this off. <laughs> what a one-way smoke from Taco up in that window. This could get nasty, though. Seized might be baited in because of that. Taco's just waiting. This is deadly. If Seized actually gets impatient and tries to push in, he could be in for a bit of trouble. But instead, he's playing a position that allows him to keep, keep watch on both angles, making sure nobody pushes through underpass. And while his teammates are taking control of top mid as well, Navi in the meantime kind of edging around in pit, hoping to get lucky and just making some noise. We saw Luminosity on the T side when they were when they were struggling to get terrorist rounds. They, they changed the pace a lot. They had some aggressive strategies. They had some of those tactics where they just pot flashed themselves through one smoke on the A ramp, trying to get out of that bomb set aggressively. Navi is known for not really switching out of this fast pace or this slow pace style. That they've never really gone that fast pace here against Luminosity. So still trying to ground these rounds out. 45 seconds left in the round. Two smokes to work with, and it's looking like it's going to be a B split with Edward just slowly coming up catwalk late. Wow, Taco, how does he deal with this? He doesn't have any counter grenades coming out. No Molotovs to buy in time. No smoke to sort of block off anything either. Cold helping him. Taco winning the first fight as well. Goes for the second spray down. Looking for the triple. It's going to be all three kills. He's got six bullets, but he can't find the last in there. Cold will take care of it. And that is going to be Luminosity with a very hard reset of Navi's economy. They're back to just about 2,000 on average. And a 12 to 11 scoreline here. That's, that was the worst possible thing that could have happened to Navi. Yeah, this is the nightmare situation. Back on the pistols. Guardian at 1500. It's got to be a double save if he wants to have an AWP into the next round. This is the nightmare, but that, that is such a huge risk as well from Luminosity. They have nothing in mid. They have no info on where Navi are coming from. They're playing a straight default kind of pattern. Three on A, two on B, and it all comes down to hitting the shots. So individual play is what made the difference there for Luminosity. They had no way to back it up. Fur just, yeah, slams Flamey. He knows that they've been playing around in pit. He takes that auto shot in there. Makes a little bit of extra money for himself. You get more money with the shotgun kills. We saw it yesterday with how effective Ta Taco playing that position in that bomb site right behind that last pillar. Fallen did the same thing against Liquid. It's just these wow. terrorist teams with no nades have nothing to flush him out of that spot. So he can just be so mobile, pick and choose the battles he needs. That's the real difference maker. I mean, he's coming back into it as well. He's getting into the high double digits, the high teens rather, on Taco's side. And he just catches C's trying to get tricky with that smoke. Not going to happen. And Edward is now the last man alive here for Navi. Third kill with the auto shotgun in a grand finals of the first million dollar major. 
And that's just, just rocketed just, his money up. Just fur, ladies and gentlemen, just fur. <laughs> Edward going to be running back with three health, so that's not, I mean, he can't really accomplish anything at this point in time. He's trying to hide. Best he could do is get a single kill, but Fur is on the hunt with the shotgun. Oh, Edward, is he going to suffer the same fate to come around the corner? Quad kill with an auto shotgun is going to make it a tied scoreline. 12-12. Luminosity, I mean, really, really playing well in the second half. And you can see the effect, look at the effect this night, this, this reset, this disaster situation. Guardian's gonna be on a deagle. AK-47's for Zeus and Edward. Galil on seized. Did someone bring a Macedonian flag in here? Why are they buying, though, is what I'm wondering. Why are they not just going for a quasi-buy? Tech-9, Kevlar, hope you get a plan, hope you get a lucky round in, but just allow for Guardian to get that AWP. Allow for everybody to have all of the nades, because once again, Na'Vi, they're trying to run in here, and they're just looking for the shots. They just don't have much utility to make it easier for them. Fur in this position can wreck them as they come out of apartments. It all comes down to whether the flashes are good to just force him out of, force him out of here. And he's got the angle already. So as soon as this smoke clears, it's going to be over. There's the flash, completely ineffective. And Fur, double spray for him. And he drops the bomb up on the balcony as well, which is pretty much the worst place it could possibly fall. Flamey and Edward are trying to do the best that they can, but fall, and he only gets one. Well, this is a big round here for Na'Vi. They need to get economically back in this game here. It's a two on two. The bomb has not been planted yet. They just cancelled it for a second because when you don't have that smoke for CT spawn, you do get just a little bit paranoid. Taco, he's holding that position now and Cold is holding the other angle. So now the bomb plant is really going to be tricky. There's still, I think, maybe one spot left that they could try and go for. But Luminosity actually have a lot of control in this 2v2. And they certainly have the health advantage. Cold Sierra ready and waiting. They're going to walk right into it. Flamey out in the open. Guardian left and he goes down. Cold Sierra with a double kill. And now 13 to 2. Finally. Luminosity overtake Na'Vi in the round score. And I have to ask Moses, I don't know if you were watching this, but did it look like C's got stuck on the corner? Is it even possible to get stuck on that corner coming out? Or did he just did he just not realize his model was showing a bit at the edge of the smoke? Uh, yeah, it might have just been a mistiming. I don't I don't think you can get caught on that corner. No, you can't, can you? Yeah, so I think it was just a mistiming of either the flashbang, maybe they just misread when it was thrown. But Fur, either way, just punishes that so easily. The single flash that was thrown out was completely ineffective for first position as well. So, yep. I mean, he, like, flash or not, C is getting caught or not, that flash, I mean, Fur is in the perfect place to be, basically. But it's this just is a hard counter. This is, this is something now where we've touched on a couple times. This, this lack of discipline in their economy is really starting to punish Navi because they have not had many solid buys in this half whatsoever. <laughs> Luminosity just has everything they need. It, it is a buy. You were, you were talking about the lack of discipline in the economy here. We've got uh, four tech nines, one Galil, a, a lot, if not more, almost everything in this first map here rides on the outcome of this one round for Na'Vi. Luminosity, they have some money to buy if they lose the round. They have at least a ba some bank on Cold and Fallen, but the rest are going to be in a lot of trouble. Fur, close here in the ladder room, and they're trying to push in on him. He only has 20 bullets here, but he's got some backup in Cold Sierra, and they're just not getting the kills. Cold with the double, looking for the triple, but Sue's going to run him down with that Tech-9. Now Taco on the bomb site here. They're getting very close, seized, just dodging and diving, and Taco out of bullets in the corner. He's going to die to Na'Vi, and that's going to be Fallen and FNX. Two on two. They they are so close to actually winning this map. They need another couple of kills, and Seuss is going to pick it up. He's got two health left against Fallen. Now a one-on-one, -on -one, and he needs this clutch. The bomb is out in the open, and Fallen is just ice cold. He's not even moving from this angle. He's just in the kitchen waiting, and there's the shot. Fallen going to be able to take him out, putting them at 14 rounds. That is incredible stuff. Navi somehow almost makes that work. But now this is that position that they have no more rounds that they can save. That was their last chance to kind of save around and get a solid buy going on, because it's not necessarily the weaponry they have, it's the nades that they can use in those rounds. We saw that time, the, the limited nades that Na'Vi did have, they used it. Luminosity throws some nice counter flashes, some nice counter nades, stalls them out completely, but Na'Vi just has to push forward and did like really, really bad fights for them, just because they have no more utility to rethrow. This round, they only have a flashbang at this point. They've already used their one smoke. Yeah, they have the single flash on Edward. There was a little shakiness, something that we're not used to seeing between Fur and Tonko, you know, missing, making, drawing out their sprays that gave Na'Vi the chance to, to capitalize on that. But I think Luminosity, after winning that round, they're going to be settled and ready to just take this first map. It's all on Na'Vi now to come up with something magical. Where are the grenades, Moses? Where are they at? They're all gone. They're all gone. This is, this is going to be so difficult for them, especially with Galil's trying to win some of these battles. Guardian, no armor. 
It's actually Cease who's going to be the one that looks like to take some initial fight. Edwards trying to work his way up catwalk using a little bit of his smoke for cover, but that's gone now as well. And Cold falls for it. Cease with great positioning. They thought all those grenades had worked out. Fur going to be going down. Navi not giving up without a fight. Taco going to go for the quick peek, but he's got to be careful to get... Oh, he hits that shot! Taco announcing himself as a good AWPer here. That's about the right time to do it as well as Flamey goes down. Luminosity are taking some very quick steps here towards winning the first map. Seuss and Guardian, they are going to be left and trying to get out. Guardian showing up with a kill on Fallen. And that's the perfect start. The bomb is going to go down. Guardian is covering him. He's not even looking at the jungle right now. Going to be peeking in again. He hits a shot on FNX. And now it's Taco alone. One on two. He goes for the beak. He takes down one more for the triple kill. And now Seuss hiding inside the bomb site. Taco trying to see if he can make it in. This would be one of the biggest clutches of his career and possibly win the map. He's going to go for the quick spray through. Seuss is on the other side. Taco trying to see if he can make it around. He jumps. He goes down. And Seuss going to be able to win the round. Navi keeping themselves alive just barely guardian bails him out there in a round where they have to win those duels because of the lack of hates guardian just peeks and grabs two quick ones falling out in the open and then covers his teammate off towards jungle but taco almost able to make a hero play the issue with this win from navi is that you can't rely on, on winning those duels a lot of those are 50 50 battles that they're taking you can't always rely on them to close this match out, so they're going to have to come up with something. Fortunately, the money for the Luminosity side is now very, very weak. Fallen has plenty of it. Uh oh Yeah, this is a pretty hard reset, actually, on Fur FNX. The thing is that Fallen has the 9300 in the bank, so they should be able to actually do something with that. But yeah, the miss by on Taco is just a solo MP7. That's going to cost them. I mean, Navi, I mean, thanks to the bomb plant, they actually get something out of this. I mean, they're still able to get a buy, and they save the AWP, so they have a healthy buy as well. This is actually a very, uh, for how dominant Luminosity has been in this half, this is now a really sketchy situation for them. This is why we're seeing the pause so they can talk this out. Because if Luminosity buys into this round and they happen to lose it, yeah, they're out of money. And then they're going to have no money for essentially the rest of the half. And this late in the game, that kind of a reset can allow Navi to get up towards 15 or 16 rounds. Just to, just to point out as well, both the Navi rounds they've had in the second half have, have been one member of Navi surviving. That doesn't inspire a lot of confidence when you're going into the last couple of rounds here of this map. I, this, this is, it's got to be a really tense situation for both teams. I love how it's so similar to how the first map played, <laughs> the first half played out as well. That this, I mean, again, one of the key clutches goes Navi's ways. This is what prevented Luminosity from getting off to a strong start in the first half and dominating that T side is that all the clutches kept going Navi's way. And so if Zeus, you know, he's able to keep delivering like this, if, uh, I mean, I'm just still blown away that Taco actually outduels Guardian, completely shuts down 1v2 on B side. Like, where is this Taco coming from? He's just wrecking right now. We just need more of that for Luminosity to be able to close out this first map. Otherwise, Navi will be in the lead. Well, the game is going to resume in 15 seconds, ladies and gentlemen. We'll get back into it here. Navi, they should be able to, to steal this round away, unless Luminosity are going to go for sort of last second buy here, which, um, would you recommend it, Moses? Is it that time? No. I don't think so, because Fallen, Fallen can drop multiple M4s, so why risk it into this round when the next time you can have much, much more behind it? He can drop it, and actually, they're going to go for it. Or at least Cold is. So this is um, some Frenchies in the scene. That's still paused. <laughs> yeah, keep it up. I love it. It's been a good crowd this weekend, hasn't it? It's been so sick. It's been ridiculous. It's been amazing. Yeah, we got our money's worth here. Well, this is, uh, it is really intriguing what they're going to do with this money. Uh, this buy by cold. That, OK. That makes sense. Miss by, okay, so they're actually reversing it. That's what's happening. Yeah, yeah, luckily we have that kind of uh, technology here. Mm -hmm. And obviously, in case anything does go wrong, we do have obviously Valve employees in the stadium uh, ready to fix any kind of issue. So um, that's, uh, that's uh, oh. also a relief. So they go for yeah, the buy. So they go for it, all or nothing. And Fallen has the AWP, so he's glass cannon, so he did drop an M4 over. Tell us what the risk is, Moses. What, what is the problem? Uh, what is the potential sort of outcome if they lose this round, Luminosity? It's actually both teams who have virtually no money left. Flamey on Navi has the most money at 1,000, but they've got three members on exactly zero dollars. Same with Luminosity, actually. Three members down to zero. The loser of this round this late in the match is going to have to save or just force buy up on the pistols. I mean, they don't. This would be such a huge advantage. And for Luminosity on 14, if they win this and get to 15 and go against pistols to win this first map, that's a very, very scary situation for Navi to be in at the moment. Look how far up for an FNX are right here. 
even if they don't find anyone, which we can see on the window map, they won't. This gives them so much information. If they peek around this corner and don't see anyone, that is a lot of, uh, of sort of tactical uh, information they can they can draw on what Navi are doing here. And it might make the final difference. What it is also, FNX is there to support them. So if Fur actually hears anything, FNX can, can pop flash over. They don't have a lot of nades, so they've got to go for some kind of tricky, aggressive play. They've got to do something that can kind of equalize the situation because their arsenal is much weaker. So they have to catch them off guard somehow. And look at Flamian Seas. They're actually oh, walking in. They could it. be walking into the trap. This could be awful for them. FNX is going to spot it. And you're right, he has the flashbang still. He saved it for a long time. Down to 55 seconds. You could just pop that randomly if you want to. But they are keeping it ice cold right now. This one very simple, very default trick that's coming out. See if it's going to be quite enough for them. Fallen, he's controlling windows still. They're actually going to jump on over. Edward going to be coming in here. Flamey and C still not moving up on the slope here. Fallen looking for the shot. He's got his cross here right on him, but he's not pulling the trigger just yet. And on the other side, Fur going to engage the battle. First skill comes in. FNX with the follow-up. The one-two punch combination and Seas and Flamey are going to be going down now. Seuss has to try and salvage it. He's coming up into the Tetris box. He's getting the first skill in. Edward with the follow-up. Navi, they're trying to bring it back. Seuss covering the whole bomb site here. He kills FNX as well. Turns around. Cold Sierra very nearly dead. Taco, he's there with the ref flank, but everybody in the bomb site has already died. There's only 10 seconds left. If he kills the bomb planter here, that's going to be the end of the round. He goes for it, but it's a second too late. Taco, he just doesn't make it, and now it's a one on two. I'm just waiting to see if that clutch is going to come through here because Taco. He's got the angle on one, but it's a perfect crossfire. And that is an impossible situation for him to find himself in. Perfect positioning from Navi. One in connector, one on the site. No matter which way Taco looks, he's going to get caught in the back as soon as he shows himself. So very well done there by Navi. And just hats off to Zeus for coming through in a huge way here for his team. 25 kills. Well, and a, and a few of them in pretty much the most important uh, round of the map. Yeah, that was sick. You did warn them, Moses. Yep. This is now this is such a tough spot to be in. So they're gonna have to essentially allow Navi to get up towards fifteen, barring anything crazy, but there's no armor bot on the luminosity side. There's no nades whatsoever. They're completely out of money. So that next round they're gonna have to try and force overtime with whatever they can have. One C set seventy five. When has that ever made a difference? <laughs> it's Especially not in the hands of Cold though. Or Flusher. Or Flusher, exactly. Basically the two best C set players in the world. But FNX, I mean He's got the clutch potential. He can make something happen here at all times. It all comes down to, well, timing basically here for Luminosity because we can see they have a very close stack towards Pits right now on a site in case Navi wanted to go for a straight smoke round and just try and completely close the map out that way. They would have been ready to counter it, but now that the clock keeps ticking in Navi, they aren't really biting on anything just yet. It's not really going to pan out for Luminosity in these close positions. Instead, Navi, they're putting much more focus over towards that B site for now. Well, look at how they can abuse, actually, this battle. Cold runs out of bullets, but look at how they can abuse Luminosity. They take mid-control. With the rifles, they can win these duels from range, but Fur actually finds the opening one, but now Flamey and Edward respond right back. That's the important one right there. Well, we talked about the 1C set 75. It's at least going to be in the right position here for FNX, but the range is a little bit too much there. If he had maybe waited a couple of seconds, there might have been an opening. Fallen, going to try and see if he can get the crossing kill, but not going to happen. And Fur, with the stolen AK, is going to be running away and trying to hide halfway across the map. So this is going to put Navi at map point, 15 to 14. This is going to be so difficult now. And they should definitely be hunting right now. I mean, Navi, they can yeah. afford to sack at least one more player to get this gun off of her, and that's why they're sending Flamey up the top mid, and they're also making their way through CT. That's Edward on the hunt over there. But if they can catch out Fur, it would have a huge impact here on Luminosity's last round, you know, to be able to put up a fight. They're already going to be limited on utility, Luminos Luminosity. That, that's going to be the trick, because the last time they had a buy with, with low economy, they had that set up on A ramp with, with Fur and FNX, and it mm -hmm. actually worked out. It got them the two opening kills. But they're going to have to come up with something creative like that. And it does look like Fur is going to be able to save this Edward. It's going to turn the corner, but Fur wins that battle, luckily, thankfully. All right, well, it's only fitting. Our analyst panel did point it out. This is a very, very close game. Almost impossible to call. And it's gone all 30 rounds here, which is absolutely incredible. And we do have 1.3 million viewers tuning in. So make some noise here at the Nationwide Arena. What a day it is already. Magnificent. This is what it's all about. Mid control again for Navi, and actually very aggressively. This is a little bit quicker. 
Those smokes were even up by the time they came out. They might have had to take some duels, and Flamey's going to win a battle at A very quickly up A ramp, but FNX evens things out. That kind of trade early on, not exactly what Luminosity need right now. They have at least a, a few more grenades than the previous rounds, but now V, they've just found the right rhythm here. Just at the end of the half, it seems, they figured out exactly what works. Now they just need another four kills and they'll be able to make it through. Otherwise, we could be going to overtime. And overtime in the finals? Yes, please. Thank you very much. With how both of these teams are so dead even right now, it would be nothing but an amazing match. Zeus getting up into connector, however. And he's going to be getting close, hoping to catch out on your rotators as this push comes in here for Na'Vi. With a minute left on the clock, they have just enough nades to make it work. And he's taking the peek, trying to get as much information as possible. I mean, this kind of execute with Zeus being this far up in connector and, I, and without being spotted, that's going to be really scary. If they get the right smokes in, then how is anyone, if Fur tries to rotate in, try and stop anything, Zeus is going to suit him in the back. They've got such a good position. And Zeus, I don't know why he's moving around so much. He really shouldn't be the first guy in here peeking. Should wait for the rest of Navi to actually make the execute happen. He looks a little bit nervous right now. With Fur hiding in the corner. Zeus going to be making his way around. That Molotov there. It's going to be the first kill coming in. Fur now got a little bit left. He's got the smoke. Well, backup coming in, he's got the knife out. Actually, two bullets left, trying to see if he can get the reload off. Somehow he's still alive and Cold Zero, they get the kill. Now he, how did this go wrong? Now it's a two on four. And Seized and Edward, they're on the slope. At least they have the bomb down. But this is such a tough round to win here. Luminosity, they're trying to make it back in. Another two kills, and we'd be going to overtime. Seized, he has the Molotov, he's gonna try and put it out. Gets the spray down, kills one for with the refrag now, all on Edward. He's out there, the bomb is ticking away. He gets the first kill in, but he can't get it. The Molotov not going to save the round, and we are going to overtime. And in a packed stadium, no less. First map of the Grand Finals, it could only happen this way. But it's such a scary situation to find yourself in now. As, as both of these teams, there's so much riding on this. Both of them had opportunities to actually close out this map and win it. And so now, how is the mindset going to be going into the second map for the team who loses this first map? That's what it's all about. Are they going to be able to reset and show that they have the fortitude, Luminosity, to, to come back once again? We saw yesterday Luminosity has that mental strength, that focus to come back from any situation, to, co to co maintain their composure despite all adversity that they've gone through. Navi's kind of, you know, won every map throughout this tournament. They haven't been tested like this quite yet. But both these teams, with, the, with how many times they've played each other this year, they always know it's going to be this grind out game. They always know it's going to be this close coming down to the wire. The big deal for Navi, in my opinion, is that towards the end of this half, when they actually strung those rounds together um, to take the advantage, it's mostly on the fact that they had such an economic advantage in, the, in those rounds. They were beating up Luminosity. We saw a lot of weak buys by LG there at the end once Navi was able to build up some money. Going into overtime, that disappears for at least the first two rounds. Mm. What happened in that execute at the end there? They had they had only fur in window room. Everybody else was 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 much uh, much further away. How did how did they not win that round? Taco just makes that that play of him jumping through his own smoke, just narrowly avoiding death with a Molotov and everything. That's huge. That that maintains control of that position for Luminosity. He also gets one kill, I believe it was. So um, it's actually incredible because I was very scared. The LG setup, they've done that a couple times in that half, was kind of gambling towards one site. Mm -hmm. You could see the lean was over towards mid, uh, towards Catwalk and the B bomb site. No one was even in CT spawn. That avenue of retake really wasn't there for LG, so a huge win for them. But Navi have been doing a very good job of keeping LG guessing as well with these CT, set with these CT setups. You know, they've actually shown some variety in their play, willing to go to A site, willing to go to B site. They haven't been focusing too much on one or the other, and that, gives a, that makes it much more difficult for that CT in-game leader to call, you know, where to stack his men. Now, we have to assume there are a couple of new viewers uh, with this many people watching. So again, we're now playing an MR3, 10,000 starting money over time. That means you get to play three rounds on the side that you're already on. Then you switch halves and play another three rounds on the other side. You need to win four in total, which means the first team to 19 rounds here is going to be the winner. Or double overtime is definitely possible. Uh, we've had overtimes all throughout this tournament, actually, all the way back to the group stage. And we're already in. So let's see. Fallen position on the A site. Not going to find anybody yet. And once again, Navi, at this point, they're going through the motions. They're trying to get control of mid. Aggressive nades going down here, trying to change things up, actually, here for Luminosity. And they aren't wasting any time, Navi. Once they get the mid control, they go straight up connector. And FNX is in a bit of a tight spot. Flavie's there to enter. And he actually picks up the first kill. And now, Navi, they can actually slow down the pace and force Luminosity to make a mistake here. Well, this change of pace itself, essentially a rush, but look at Fur. Oh, that smoke. That second smoke was up. But 
Navi so fast paced, Luminosity not used to that kind of speed. What is Seas doing? Because he's Fur, exactly, he has actually got the positioning on Fur. So even if Fur decides to go up connector, Seized, he's going to have the perfect spot for this. Bomb has not been planted yet. Cold is actually going to deny it, and Fur, he gets the drop in the end. So he still has an impact, even with Seas and the positioning, it works out. They, he didn't know he was too far back on, on, on up top mid. He didn't realize that Fur was there. Otherwise, they would have instantly got the kill. But with the bomb down here, and there is a smoke and a Molotov on Cold Sierra. So if they smoke up that bomb, look at Seuss running all the way back. Where is, where are they doing? They need, I mean, I was surprised they at least didn't try and recover the bomb. Then they could have gone to the B bomb site. 45 seconds. They still have 40 seconds to play with here. Are they going to try and go for something clever? Cold has got this angle on window. He realizes that if they buddy up, the boost can come through. And he's worried about some kind of pressure coming in here on short. Seized, misses the jump. And that might have just saved his life. It's funny how these things work out. But Cold, this is an important battle to win. And he can't do it. Zeus finds him. No. Falling going to go aggressive. He lands that shot on Seas. Then now there's just 15 seconds left here. Fallen trying to see if he can clutch the 1v2. He's got the first kill in. And Seuss has got a double of his own. The bomb has been picked up, but this time he can't actually run to the B bomb site. He gets planted and he's not faking it. He just goes straight for it. And now one missed shot here for Fallen could cost him his life. He's trying to push closer. He gets it through the box, but he needs another one. Pistols out as well. He goes for the shot. Now, oh, the headshot comes through. And Seuss with the triple kill. That's going to be Na'Vi winning the first round of overtime. Wow. I can't even describe how difficult that is when you get hit through the box like that, down to that low HP. To hit a headshot like that, that is a big time play. Getting into that shoulder peak war. Fallen reacting a little bit there with the P2K looking to, get to find the shot. If he had tagged him or not, that might have worked. But he decides to go back to the op, and eventually that's actually what cost him his life. Zeus with the perfect timing for the peak. And now all the pressure's on Luminosity here, losing that CT sound, that first CT round, was starting with only $10,000. When you're buying ops, your bank, it goes away so quickly. As you guys can see, light on the nades here for Luminosity. If they lose this round, they'll be on a force buy for the last round of the first half, and it's pretty much all over for them at that point. Na'Vi will be able to run away with it. FNX, though, from Shadow is going to catch Flamey looking the wrong way. And now the pressure's on here for Na'Vi. Can they actually hold this line? Guardian not going to miss the shot. Stops him cold, but he cannot get rid of Fur. Still in the back line, you're right. Fallen going to pick up that kill. Cold Sierra gets the kill, and that it is actually Cold Sierra killing himself somehow. I'm not even sure how. I think he jumped into the middle um, of the map, and there is some, some fall distance there. So that's a bit unfortunate, but I don't think it'll have an impact on the round here. Seuss, he clutched the line last time. This time it should be almost impossible. And Fur, he's going to pick up the double kill. And FNX, how many grenades did they spend on trying to get rid of his position? They had the Molotov up on the balcony. They had flashbangs and HGs rolling into the to shadows. And yep. still, they couldn't actually... He got, and we only got the, the one trade, but he just stayed alive for a long time. It's the most important one is that, that first kill on these executes prevents the progress towards the bombsite for Navi. Guardian was the last one there with the op. Had to stay back. He can't really do it too effective entering onto a bombsite. Can certainly get some picks. But that pop flash to help FNX out, that was a huge, huge support play from Luminosity. Oh, wow. And T-side double op. Navi. This is a big play here. And actually, for, whoa, the misclick. Might have cost him his life there. Edward, is he going to find the headshot in the end? No, but Fur, he keeps the pressure on. And this is interesting from Luminosity. Last round of the uh, last round of this CT half, they've played very passively in mid, and they actually decide to push Fur all the way up the top mid to throw Navi off. Navi have gone for the change of pace. Luminosity doing the same thing on their CT side. There's actually decent control here. Zeus and Seas an underpass. Now Guardian and Edward are going to come back towards mid. Fur is just biding his time, though. He's just waiting. Expecting there to be a smoke in this window room, and from this angle, he'll be able to get a pick once it fades, and that might catch Navi off guard. And he can hear all this as well. He can hear Seas jumping up. There's a lot of info to go off of. Fur, he's got a perfect spot. If they decide to come through here, he can catch somebody coming out of underpass, and he hears these steps as well. So, information, but Zeus will find the headshot. Not going to get caught off guard. And no instant repeat coming in from Luminosity. That's all Guardian is waiting for. He's like, yep, you're down a man. You're going to have to make a play at some point. But he decides to fall off. And that's exactly when Cold starts going for the shoulder peaks. Na'Vi, not a lucky break this time around for Guardian. Instead, they're going to have to do it the hard way and actually crack open a site. And they are pushing into the one position where the AWP is. That might be the saving grace here. Is there a man down? Taco, not going to be able to get the kill. They're pretending that there's going to be a B push. And right now, Luminosity are eating it as well. There's three members here. And on the, on the other side, just fallen holding. So he's going to hit, hit more than just a couple of AWP shots to make this work. 18 seconds left. They're trying to make their way in. They're falling with the first kill. The bomb has dropped as well. 14 seconds. Navi 
Surely they won't be running out of time. That'd be the worst way to lose the overtime here. He's going to try and get the Molotov in. Six seconds left. That's going to be a bomb plant. Guardian just running in there, not worrying about any kind of coverage. And we'll see. Four on four for the retake. Now the Munasi, all of them coming from the same place as well. And this clever play. Cole, does he make it work? Nobody there to greet him, unfortunately. Now he's got to push in with his mates. All four players from Luminosity have to commit, and there's the first spot. FNX, he spots out C, he gets the headshot, and Zeus trades. Brings it back to the three on three. Guardian with the angle in, Tetris not reacting in time. And the man advantage not for Luminosity. They have the kits as well, and they have the bullets too. Cole takes out Zeus, and it's all on Edward here. 1v2, pass to Bahia down, Fallen, and he hits the shot, but Fallen will drop him. There's just not enough time. Once again, Edward coming through with the huge clutch for Na'Vi to make all the difference. <laughs> what a play from Edward. He, that's about the biggest smile I've ever seen Edward have on his face. Twice in, its, in the tournament, in big rounds. Like that, I mean, the Cajun B1 was pretty dirty, but that is sick. And Fallen, he's been so consistent hitting the shots so far. And he misses the one key play right there. To be able to, he had the angle on Edward as well. As soon as Edward gets his kill, boom, Fallen is in. But Edward's so on point. The shoulder peek baits the, out the shot. The experience to do that and not just swing really wide to try and take that battle. But once he knows he's baited out the shot as well, he just goes for, he knows the reload time. He just peeks out, grabs the diffuser. That's Navi winning two out of three rounds in overtime on their T side. That's a half of what they got when they had 50 rounds to play with. You have to assume that they are heavy, heavily favored here going into the half, the next half of overtime. This is going to be, it's going to have to require some really, really deep tactics coming out of Luminosity to make sure that they can at least get two rounds, if not three. It's going to be a huge struggle as well, because like we said, I mean, look at this performance though from Zeus. He's yeah. got 30 kills, and this is this is one thing that we always touch on. When we said Navi, this 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 surge that they've had lately is all five members at any point can have this kind of an impact. It wasn't always like this. It was, it was usually just mostly Guardian going off. Flamey started being a little bit inconsistent with his performances, but now it's Edward in there. We see him having big matches in this tournament. Zeus as well. Seas has his matches as well. Every player on this Navi team carries them through stretches now. It's just a little bit more top heavy for Navi than it is for Luminosity. Luminosity, a little bit more consistent across the board. You know, what it, you know what it obviously was? It was that picture that Markolov was tweeting earlier where they got Senia and, and they got Starix in there and they had everyone together, the whole Navi gang. Seuss just sort of reminding himself, oh, I remember what this was like. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> there was a time. But no, even in that time, Markolov was the wrecking ball, so I don't even know. Yeah, yeah there's still beliefs. <laughs> I mean, of course. Markolov. Well, he had one good game this <laughs> him, him and Lurpus, you know, still got that. Uh... Yeah, I'm never giving up that hope, never. It's going to be 17 to 16 as we go into the second half of overtime. If you are just joining us, then uh, you've got to stick around. It's only the first map of the grand finals here. There's so much more to come. So invite your friends and let's see how far we could push this. Navi, they are in prime position. They need two more rounds here on the CT side. And so far, they've been playing uh, almost flawlessly with, uh, on their CT side. So we'll see if it's going to work out. Fallen. That kind of start is not too bad, and they speed up behind an instant cold hole. Sierra in the middle, taking out Edward. And now, V, should they even fight this? No, save right off the bat because it's a very fast paced tactic from Luminosity. This round was lost in the first 20 seconds. And now, I mean, this is the thing we talked about how punishing it was for Luminosity to lose that first CT round in the first half of overtime. Navi needs to keep these guns. They need to be able to have the utility. They need to be able to nades that, that they're going to need in the next round. Not only that, they need to have the option to draw, to have Guardian on and off and also drop one for Seized, try and maintain it. Oh yeah, this is all about setting up and saving. And Luminosity, of course, they're aware of this and they don't have to worry about any money at all. They're about to win this first round, so they're going to be super solid now. So they can actually catch them out. FNX right around the angle. Are we going to have the flash? Oh, that's so good. <laughs> Luminosity with the team. They remember, they're like, we have so much utility, we might as well make use of it. That's such a smart play. Even just that one kill is huge. I mean, Moses, uh, you, you've played even, even in CPLs. How badly outplayed do you feel when that happens? You know, you've got like some weird off angle. <laughs> you're not standing in a common spot on the map and then you see all of, all of a couple of pixels of a flashbang and you're dead. It's, it's just so, you're just like, oh man, what can I do now? You don't expect that kind of a pop flash whatsoever. Late in the round, bomb <laughs> about to explode. It's just soul crushing. Auto Sniper is the uh, answer, and it has been in this tournament before. We've seen some really big plays with it. Now would be about that time here. Luminosity, 
Tying the scoreline up at 17-17. Flaming going to be peeking out again right into Fallen's AWP. Sush on the ladder. He goes down for catching Edward. A gold zero with a shot on Guardian to bring him down. And now seized. I don't even know what to do if you're seized. He goes down at FNX. 18-17. Luminosity. Where is this coming from? Navi is not prepared for this kind of aggression and pace that Luminosity has brought into overtime. And that purchase of the auto sniper on Flamey, he might be regretting that at the moment, because you can see it hurts the economy so much. Such an expensive weapon. Scout goes out on the seas. He also has no armor. I love it that Luminosity, they're going for these aggressive plays, not because they're taking the fight to Navi, but because they're not allowing themselves to get nervous. Slow play rounds, pressure mounts, pressure builds. You're thinking of everything that's on the line. You do not want to miss your shot. The longer you drag it out, the worse it can be. But they take a huge advantage here. They actually put themselves on map point with two very quick, clean rounds, just straight onto the sights, no fear at all. And there's the first shot. Fallen catches sees peeking, and that's going to start things off strong. Even spots out Guardian, goes for the repeat, though. And Guardian not going to miss. It's a little bit too much out of Fallen, perhaps, trying to go for that repeat once he spots the AWP having the angle. Maybe feeling just a little bit of momentum after that, that sick jump shot. Mm -hmm. And also, that's, I mean, we saw it with Edward in the clutch. That's also experience telling there for Guardian. He could have pulled the trigger late, gotten shoulder peaked, and then Fallen wins. But instead, he keeps his calm. He's like, yep, got you. And it allows Guardian to pick up a really cool position here where he could see if there was an exit coming. He's looking quite far, and he was just looking quite far into the hallways. I don't like that, though. Guardian being at the B bomb site with the AWP, that's your impact player. You want that weapon involved in any kind of action that occurs. Oh, no. Flamey as well. They have three Molotovs. That position is absolutely going to get fired up. Even Sue's position could get fired up here. This is, this is really frightening right now. At least Cold Zero is not the one FX coming up. They could firebomb both these positions in the last 40 seconds here. Navi could lose in the most horrible way possible. Edward is in jungle. He might be the only one to save them right here. Grenade coming in. Another follow-up. Smoke here. But Flamey, the crossfire is going to die with Sue's as soon as the Molotov rains in here. 30 seconds. And Luminosity... They're just waiting for it. Guardian is still miles away. Flamey down here. They're walking out without making any noise. He's going to go for the spray. And it's a headshot instead from Cold Zero. Sue's dropping the bomb once. They need a lot more right now. FNX going to pick up the kill. Edward trying to deny it. 15 seconds left. There are all the Molotovs raining into CT spawn instead. And now Guardian is finally here with the AWP. 10 seconds. Edward, he did it once, but this time the bomb, it is going to be going down to the last second. Taco getting it in, and Edward has to clutch it again. It's now a 1v2. They've got almost no health. He could definitely do this. He looks for the shot. He gets the one kill in, and there's her picking it up. And Luminosity winning on Mirage. That is an intense first map of the Grand Finals. That is everything we can hope for, but not if you're a Na'Vi fan. And that's just, all, fan. that's just all trading and teamwork from Luminosity. I mean, we were expecting that Molotov execution to come out in these positions to break up some of these crossfires. But they didn't want to give any indication they were coming. They didn't want to give the jump on, on any of the rotations from the B-bomb side. They didn't want to give them those extra seconds of knowledge to get over in time. They're just so efficient. That's the whole point of it all, right? You know, on the A side, on the B side, in the first two rounds of their T sides, right? Moving in together, that death ball, getting that four-man unit together, just boom, crash into the site. If the first guy dies, no problem. The second guy's in there to get the trade frag efficiently, and you get onto the site. That way, you just grind their, your way in there. This was a little bit more of a delayed sort of scenario, but it's exactly the same concept. They move in together, that pair of three, and they just smashed through the defense. Zeus tried to do the best that he could with the one trade, but it's just not enough. Well, that's only map one. Of course, we have another one coming up for you, ladies and gentlemen. So stick around. We'll go to a quick commercial break, and we'll get the full breakdown as the grand final continues.